Let's take a look at your jab. Now your jab is a straight punch to the center of someone's face or their body off your front hand. Now, you're gonna be in your stance, your hands are up, elbows are in. What are you gonna do? You're gonna shoot this hand straight forwards, straight down the pipe and then back to your head. So if we have a look at it on the back, hands up, elbows in, bouncing foot to foot. Okay, now that you've got your jab, you can put it in a little combo. For example, double jab cross, right kick to the body. So, that's your jab. Now we're gonna look at your thumb up jab. The reason you use a thumb up jab is to sneak through someone's guard. So, if the hands are nice and tight like this, what you're gonna do, instead of punching and turning your hand over, which widens the size of your glove, what you wanna do, you wanna punch straight down the middle with your thumb up to the ceiling, as that makes the strike a lot narrower to fit through someone's hands, okay? So, on the back, you're gonna be bouncing, your hands up, you're gonna shoot it, you're gonna keep your thumb up to the ceiling this time, instead of turning your hand over at the last second. So, looks like this. And then you can put it in a combo, for example, thumb up jab, right cross, left kick to the body. That's your thumb up jab, you used to sneak through someone's tight guard, punch with your thumb up to the ceiling. The next punch we're looking at is your corkscrew jab. So when you throw your corkscrew jab, what you want to do, you want to throw your jab, but rotate your body all the way over so that your thumb ends up pointing down to the floor. What happens is that when it hits someone's face, it ends up ripping their skin slightly, okay? Because you get a rotational twist and the leather tears the soft part of their face. So, hands up, bouncing foot to foot. You're gonna throw your jab, this time you're gonna corkscrew it so your hand ends up going downwards to the floor. You get a little bit of a twist on the back as well, which looks like this. So you wanna rotate, turn your thumb down to the floor. And you can put that in a little combo, for example, corkscrew jab, hand down to the floor, right cross, double left hook, right kick. That's your corkscrew jab. Punch straight, turn your thumb over to the floor, rip their face. One of my favorite moves that we're gonna look at now is the back fist. Now what you wanna do, you wanna be bouncing, your hands are gonna flick straight out in front of you, a bit like you're trying to swat a fly. I wanna hit with the top part of my knuckles at full extension. So I'm not trying to jab and leaning forwards like this. I'm trying to whip and hit as long as I can with the back of my hand. So on the bag, you want to be slightly further out, you want to punch, but lean and then whip them. Catch them right in the eye, make them go a bit blind, and uh, it's really fast and really annoying if you keep landing it. For example, lean, hit with the back of your knuckles, okay? Make it fast and snappy. And you can put that one in a combo, for example, whipping back fist, right cross, left hook, right cross, left kick. Let's have a look. That's your whipping back fist. Whip it straight out, back to your head. Let's look at the hot step jab. When you do a hot step jab, the idea is to hit your opponent and make them come towards you afterwards. So, you're gonna be throwing your jab, but you wanna step in. As you step, imagine the floor is really hot and you have to step back out with your hands a little bit more open this time to draw them in. So I'm here, I step in, I hit my opponent and I step out. So they wanna come down the middle to start to hit me. Usually I like to follow with a big front kick up the center and then follow with a combo afterwards. For example, I'm out of range, I step in, 
I step out as I see them coming towards me, I throw my kick down the middle. Okay? So, hot step, back out as I come, throw the kick. One more time, hot step, jab, open my hands, draw them in, and then kick. And then you can follow with a combo afterwards, for example. Step in, hot step, jab, really front kick, cross the cross. So that's your hot step jab. Step in, imagine the floor's really hot, you've got to get back out straight away. Draw them in by leaving the gap down the middle, you know they're going to come. Big kick up the middle, follow with any combination you like. The next jab we're going to look at is the window jab. I like to call it a window jab because it looks like you're cleaning a window. Now, what you want to do, you want to move your hand a lot faster than usual and in all different directions. Now, what this does, it makes your opponent freak out and it's very unorthodox on the timing. So instead of being here like this and throwing my jab, what I do, I start to move my hand really fast and then punch from different angles. Okay, and it's very distracting. So, on the back, you want to start moving that hand and then hit whenever you want to. Okay, from any direction that you like. That's called the window jab. So, you can throw your window jab, move in, throw your jab wherever you like, then follow with a right cross, a left hook, and then a right knee this time. So, one more time. Window jab, hit, right cross, left hook, right knee. So let's look at that in really fast time. That's your window jab. Move it around really fast to distract your opponent and then hit from any angle that you like. This jab is called the rising jab. What you do from your stance, you drop your hands slightly lower and then I punch from nice and low under here. So whilst keeping myself slightly protected, I rise it underneath and I hit underneath someone's vision. So feel the vision is nice and straight, try and catch it right underneath under their jawline. That's called the rising jab. So you're here, leave your hand a bit lower than usual. You can go in slightly American half guard if you want to. And then you flick it straight up the middle and catch them underneath the jaw. So on the bag, drop your hands. Make sure you're not in range where you're going to get hit. And then flick it straight up and underneath. Underneath into their chin. So you can practice that rising jab. Then what you're going to follow with this time, you're going to go rising jab, right cross, left hook, right elbow into the bag. So, nice and fast. And that's the rising jab. Drop it low, make sure you're not in range, flick it right underneath their jawline, follow with a right cross, left hook, right elbow. Now we're going to look at your stutter jab. When you stutter, it's kind of two beats. So you want to be, bah, bah, okay? You go halfway out, which makes your opponent over parry. They're used to parrying your shots. So you throw it halfway, make them parry, but then you come over the top with the second punch. So it goes halfway out and then all the way out. Now on the bag, you start to jab. Halfway, then fully back into their face. Don't bring it back to your head. Don't go one, two, it's too slow. It wants to be one, two, straight out like a leapfrog. So that's your stutter jab. Let's put it in a combo. You're gonna go, stutter jab. Right cross, left uppercut, right cross. So.
That's your stutter jab. Fry it halfway so that they overreact and then hit them again over after their reaction. Now we're going to look at your makatoon, which is a tired jab, a falling jab. When you're in your stance, you want to lift up your front knee as your weight falls forward. You want your hand to land before your foot. What that does is let all the energy of your falling power go through your hand and get a lot more power rather than your foot hitting the floor first. So you don't want to go like this and punch. You want to go punch step. So it's just a half a second before. So when we do it on the back, you're going to do your maca two. And then you can put it in a combo as it's a tire jab or add in two skip knees after the right cross. So that's your maca two. Make sure you fall forward, let your hand land first before your leg. You get falling gravity into the end of your punch, makes it a lot more powerful. Now let's look at your sticky jab, exactly what it says on the tin. As you throw your jab to your opponent's face, you leave it on there for half a second and then you replace it with a big right hand. So it's not a one, two, it's a one, two and you stick it to their face, replace with a big right cross over the top. So, on the bag, you're not going you're going jab, cross, stick, big right. And now you can put that in a combo. For example, we'll go sticky jab, right cross, left hook, Spinning back fist. That's going to be the combo. And that's your sticky jab. Throw it out, stick it to their face for half a second as you pull it back, replace it with a big right cross over the top. Sticky jab. Your straight right goes straight down the middle, right through the inside of someone's gloves down the center line here. As you throw it, rotate your back foot, rotate your hip, rotate your shoulder, punch straight down the line and turn your sh glove over at the last second. Keep your elbow in and your chin down. This is your straight right. Now in order to align it properly, it's better to take a little step to your left, which instead of throwing this punch and having it go over this hand, you throw it straight down the middle just like this. So, on the bag. That's your straight right, straight down the pipe into the center of their face. Now let's put it in a combo. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go straight right, left liver shot, left hook, straight right again. And that's your straight right. Now your cross comes just over the outside of someone's glove. Whereas your straight right comes down the centre, your cross comes just over the outside and comes over in this gap here. Works best if you take a little step over to the right to come onto the outside a little bit more. So, on the bag, move offline a touch, angle and throw your cross. And then you can put it in a combo. For example, right cross, left hook, right cross, double, left hit. And then you can speed it up. And that's your right cross. Step pop flying just a touch, get an angle, throw it to the outside and let it come over the top of their glove in this little gap here. Your overhand is a really powerful technique that lands on the top of someone's temple or on the side of their jawline. What you want to do is throw it a bit like a cricket ball where it comes over the top, 
and lands 45 degrees downwards on the side of someone's temple. To get extra power, take a little step to your left, and then as it comes up and over, drop your weight downwards as you throw it. So, on the bag, your overhand. And that's a really nice, hard, powerful technique that you can throw. Especially works better against smaller people against taller people. Now let's put it in a combo. The combo is going to be step and overhand, left hook, right cross, left hook, spinning heel kick. Now let's do the whole lot. And that's your overhand. Step off line, throw it nice and powerful to their temple. Really good knockout shot. The step through cross is a really good way of closing the distance and secretly switching your stance. So, when I'm in my stance, what I do, I throw my right hand. As I throw it, I step through. And then I go back to guard and I'm already in the other stance. So, on the bag, bouncing foot to foot, slightly out of range. And then you switch back to your other stance. That's called your step through cross. Now that we're in the other lead, what we'll do, we'll throw our step through cross, follow with a left cross, a left right hook, and then a left low kick. So, you go. Step through cross, left cross, right hook, left low kick. Do the whole lot. That's your step through cross. Really good way of changing your stance and covering the distance. As you throw it, step the other leg through, and now you're back in the other stance. Nice. Your jump cross is an awesome technique. Really good for closing the distance, hitting with a lot of power and faking off that rear leg. Now, when you throw it, what you wanna do, you wanna lift up your rear knee. As it comes up, you go up into the air. You're gonna kick this knee backwards as your front foot moves forwards and you punch at the same time. It's also known as a Superman punch because as you're flying through the air, you look like Superman, okay? Whilst knocking your opponent out. So, on the bag, your jump cross. Now let's put it in a combo. What we're gonna do? You're gonna throw your jump cross. You're gonna land. Left hook, right hook, left hook, right kick on the end. Now let's speed it up. That's your Superman punch. An awesome technique. Bang. Your hook is a rotational punch off your left hand or your right hand. When you're in your guard, you want to rotate the ball of your foot, your hips and your shoulders and punch through at 90 degrees whilst keeping your chin tucked down. Same thing on the other side, rotate and punch at 90 degrees. Now, if you have your hand with your thumb facing up, it engages your bicep, which tenses your arm a bit more get a bit more power, or you can punch like this, it's up to you with your thumb facing towards you and your knuckles flat. So, what I usually do, I usually rotate, I punch with my thumb up on my lead hand, and then I punch with my thumb sideways on my rear hand. Okay, just feels more comfortable to me. So, left hook on the bag. And your right hook on the bag. Keep it a bit tighter, try not to swing it out wide. Make sure you rotate your body into it. Now let's put it in a combo. Really good combo to use is a left hook, a right cross, a left hook, and then a right elbow to a throw. A hook, a cross, a hook, 
and a right elbow afterwards, straight on top to cut them afterwards. And that's your hooks. Rotate your body, keep your chin down, elbow at 90 degrees, other hand up on your head. If your other hand isn't up on your head, you'll get a double knockout. So other hand up stays tight, on both sides please. A short hook is used when you're head to head with your opponent. So a normal hook is at this range, a short hook is used when you're head to head and you're both as close as you can to each other. Now, in order to get a lot of power from here, sometimes people rock backwards, but that leaves your head open and it gives them space to hit you. So what you want to do, if you watch my rear foot, as I kick down to the floor, I rotate and I get a lot of power in this close section just here. Okay, so instead of leaning back and trying to hit someone, okay, all I do, I kick my foot to the floor, my rear heel, and I rotate into the bag. And I keep it as tight as possible. That's your short hook. Watch my rear foot. As I'm here, I'm head to head, my rear foot kicks down and I rotate in really tight. If you've got space, then this one is really good to turn your front foot, but when you're this tight, it's very hard to do that as all the weight is on that front leg. So your rear heel kicks into the floor and throw a short right hook, a uh, short left hook. So let's do a combo on the bag. The combo is gonna be short hook with your head on the bag to start. Then you're gonna throw a right uppercut. Then a left hook. And then a right curved knee. So one more time. In nice and close. Short hook, right uppercut, left hook, right curved knee onto your opponent. can start out of range and move in. One more. And that's your short hook. Kick that foot into the floor, keep it as tight as possible. Your swing hook is used as a long range hook. Now you've got your short hook, you've got your normal hook, if your opponent's slightly further away, you don't want to start reaching like this, okay, and use your head to open. What you want to do is a swing hook where you turn your thumb down to the floor and hit with the inside part of your forearm or the top of your knuckles. So you turn your hand over like this, or on the rear hand, it's like this. It's a very powerful technique. If I demonstrate it on the bag on my right hand, what I do is slightly further away, so I can't throw my normal hooks at this range. If I keep my feet exactly where they are, I can hit with the top part of my knuckles. These are called swing hooks. And they're mega powerful. If you try it on the focus pad or on someone inspiring, you'll see. So, on your left side. And on the right side. Okay, now let's put it in a combo. As they're slightly further away, we'll go from the kicking range, okay? So we're gonna go left front kick, right roundhouse kick, and then land and throw your big swing hook on the right hand afterwards. So it goes like this. And that's your swing hook. Turn your arms straight and long, hit with the top part of your knuckles or the inside part of your forearm now. And then the other way, okay? Rather than a tight, normal hook. Your liver shot is a brilliant technique when you hit into the body. Made famous really by Baz Rutten. Check him out. Drops a lot of people with it. It's located just on the right side of your body, just underneath this floating rib area just here. To get it, I like to angle off and throw it 45 degrees upwards like a shovel, trying to go in one side and out the other side, okay? If you get hit in the liver, you will know about it. You sound a bit like a sheep, 
you get hit, you go ah, like that, and you can't breathe, and you're on the floor for a good 10 seconds, allowing, well, if you land it on your opponent, you've got 10 seconds where they can't breathe to finish the fight. So it's really good. Now, on the bag, imagine this is your opponent. You want to dip down and then throw it 45 degrees into this section just here. Nice big liver shot. Ash! 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 So, let's put it in a combo. We're going to go jab, cross, liver shot, right high kick afterwards. And that's the liver shot. Dip down, get it right into their floating rib area just there. I like to use that combo. Really nice one. Pushing hook is great. Exactly what it says on the tin. As you land it, you're gonna push your opponent a bit further. What that does, if you land it on the right side of their head, is knock their balance over to the side a little bit so that they can't shin check with that leg. If someone's on balance and they can block and then the kick comes, they can shin check really nicely. If you throw the hook and you knock them off balance a little bit and their weight is on that leg, you can follow with a nice meaty kick on the top of their thigh and they can't block it because all their weight's been pushed onto it. So, on the bag, don't throw a hook and bring it back. Throw a hook and then push the bag and then low kick afterwards, okay? So you go, pushing hook, right low kick. Pushing hook, right low kick. Two more. And then you can put it in a combo. So what we'll do, we'll go jab, cross, jab, cross, pushing hook, right low kick. Okay, pushing hook, don't throw it. Throw it and push them, and then chop at that leg afterwards. Now we're gonna look at the pivot hook. The pivot hook is a really good way of angling and getting around the side of your opponent. Now, when you're in your stance, as you throw it, you're gonna take a little step. Okay, so I step first, then I throw my hook and I pivot round to the side. That lets me get a nice angle on my opponent. So, I step, I throw my hook, and I move round to the side. Okay, and again. And then when you're on the side of your opponent, they're facing one way, you want to follow with a nice few power shots as they can't see you because they're already facing that way. So I like to follow with a right cross and a right kick to the face. So it looks like this. Angle on the pivot. And that's the pivot hook. Step and angle around to the side as you throw your lovely hook. Next, we're going to look at the clothesline. Now, this is really good for setting up an outside foot sweep. What I like to do, I like to throw and step off line to my right, a big straight forearm like this to my opponent's face. As they cover up, what I do, I step around to the outside and outside foot sweep them to the floor. Okay? So, on the bag, you just visualize it, okay? That's what the bag's for. So, as I step, I throw my clothes on. And then my rear foot now is going to step up and sweep that outside boat, causing them to uh, get swept and fall on the floor. So, you close line into the outside foot sweep. Okay? And then you can just add it into a combo. It works well when you're closing the distance. And 
that's your outside foot sweep. You can do visualization stuff like that on the bag. It's what it's perfect for, drilling the stuff that you know. So, if it's been done to me, what happens is that I block my head, but as they step to the outside, this foot gets taken out, and then I end up being swept, okay? But you can do it to your partner. Close the distance, step off line, close line them in the head, and sweep that outside leg. Send them falling to the floor. Wicked technique. The brush away hook is when you can get to the outside of your opponent's cross. So as their cross comes to your head, what you want to do, you want to lift this hand up and let it just brush around to the side. And what that does is knock their arm out and knocks it offline. And then you follow with your own hook afterwards, okay? So you brush away their cross and throw your hooks to meet immediately afterwards. So, on the bag, visualize the cross coming. It's not just a normal hook. As the cross comes to my head, I brush it around and then I throw my left hook around the side. Rush, yes. Rush. Rush. Okay? So, you can set it up for a big one, two. Rush, rush. As their cross comes back, rush. Brush it away and throw your own hook over the top. Rush. Rush, rush. Rush. Rush, rush, rush. And that's the brush away hook. As the cross comes, right in the center, trying to line your body offline just a touch, and then help it go past you. Bit of a slip as well, by brushing it and knocking it and then coming over the top of your own hook. Now we're gonna add in rolling hooks, okay? Now, if my opponent throws a left hook to my head, I've got different defenses I can block, etc. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna bob and weave underneath it. Now, there's no point in me just bobbing and weaving and not giving them any damage on the way through. So as the hook comes to my head, I bob and I weave and I hook them in the body on the way through. Same thing on the other side, when the right hook comes, instead of blocking, I can bob and weave and hook them in the body on the way through. So, when I'm throwing it, if someone's doing it towards me, as the hook gets thrown, they're gonna bob and weave underneath and hook me in the body. Or on the other side, as my right hook goes, they're gonna bob and weave underneath and hook me in the body. Okay, let's just look it on the left side on the back. So, as the hook comes to my head, I bob, I weave, and I hook to the body on the way through. Okay? So, bob and weave under it and hook them in the body on the way through. Now let's put it in a combo. We're gonna go jab, cross, right elbow, bob and weave, hook to the body, right cross. And that's the bob and weave, or the rolling hook. As you roll, throw the hook to the body, and then pop back up. Your leaping left hook is a really good surprise attack that covers a lot of distance and can catch your opponent if the hands are down, slightly out of range. So, what you want to be doing, you want to crouch down, get all your weight loaded into this leg like a spring. And what you're going to do, you're going to explode and jump across at 45 degrees, and leap and throw your hook into a gap. Works well if your opponent's hands are slightly low, but they're out of range, okay? So, on the bag, I am slightly further away than usual, okay? I'm gonna drop my weight down, I'm gonna leap across, and throw my hook, okay? Bouncing foot to foot. I like to set it up by bobbing my head low uh, to start with. That puts me down low for the spring and land in my stance with my hands up, okay? So, let's put it in a combo. What we're gonna do, gonna go leaping left hook, right elbow, grab your opponent, two big skin knees, back to stance, hands up, okay? Leaping left, One 
One more time. And that's your leaping left hook. Cover a bit of distance, move your head, get it offline, hook them, and then follow up afterwards. Uppercuts are used at close range to go right underneath someone's chin. So, when you're in your stance, your hands up, elbows in. If you want to throw a left uppercut, you're going to dip down, bring this hand in the middle and punch straight up the centre. Or in your right hand, dip down, bring your hand in the middle and push up from the floor. Okay, drive from your legs, none of this. Okay, that's open and it's not as powerful. You want to get your whole body weight in. Just want to be, okay. When you do it on the bag, you've got a choice. You can either miss the bag, you can either hit upwards or you can hit inwards. It's totally your choice. I like to hit up and in just underneath my jawline, okay. So, left uppercuts on the bag. And right uppercuts. Okay, and then you can put it in a combo. For example, we'll go right uppercut, left uppercut, right uppercut, left hook, right kick. Okay? So right uppercut, left uppercut, right uppercut, left hook, right kick. So three uppercuts, left hook, right kick. That's your left and right uppercuts. Your long uppercuts. When you throw a long uppercut, it's not up the middle at close range, it's at slightly longer range, okay? When you throw it, you want to point your hands and the hands upwards to the ceiling and punch at 45 degrees long, okay? It's not a straight punch like this, okay? It's not a straight up punch to the ceiling. It's 45 degrees long, okay? Uh, Conor McGregor likes to use this punch a lot. So when he's in his stance, he likes to throw the long uppercuts, okay? So do a little bit Conor McGregor style, okay? So, in your stance, hands up, okay? Slightly wider with Conor McGregor today. So you're gonna go double jab, long uppercut, okay? So when you do it on the uh, bag, same thing, punch upwards at 45 degrees, okay? So, distract him with the jab, and then throw the long uppercut underneath. You do it off both sides. Free play a little bit. Knock the left hand, uh, knocks the head into the path of this one, which works nicely. Got a bit carried away there thinking I was McGregor. Cool, so that's a long uppercut. Punch upwards, 45 degrees longwards, okay? Right up and long. The dragon uppercut is a little bit of a fun uppercut, okay? Play around with it in sparring if you land it in a fight, brilliant, okay? What you do, you're gonna creep underneath low, underneath that eyeline, and then you punch straight upwards to the ceiling, okay? Explode off, punch up as high as you can, and knock their head straight backwards underneath, okay? A little bit of fun, it might work, it might not work, okay? Should work, okay, there's no reason it shouldn't, okay? So you're throwing some punches up high, you might creep down low and then uppercut them, jump up, big dragon uppercut, using computer games quite a lot, Tekken, games like that, really fun. Okay, so when you're on the bag, have a little play, a little mess around, and throw your dragon uppercut up the middle. Be out of range, you might bob and weave and slip some punches, move inside and knock the head off with it. Okay? The dragon uppercut. Really fun. Bolo punch is a really great punch when someone's head's nice and low. So, 
it's similar to skimming a stone, okay? If your arm's nice and loose and you skim a stone across the water, okay? It's that flicking motion that you want when you throw the bolo, okay? So, if someone's moving their head a lot and they're nice and low, okay? What you want to do is throw it by whipping it underneath, okay? And catching them as they're down low and they're bobbing their weave. So, as soon as their head reaches the bottom, that's when you catch them, okay? So, on the bag, it's not a normal uppercut where you come close and you punch straight up to the ceiling. And it's not a long uppercut like this. It's a whipping uppercut. Okay, you want to leave your arm loose. Imagine you're skimming a stone. And whip it right underneath when their head bobs and weaves. Okay, not too great if their head is up tall because it leaves me really open on this side of my body. Okay, so it works well when they're bobbing and weaving. Okay, so when you throw it on the bag, Okay, so we can set that up by giving them something to bob and weave. Okay, now what we'll do, we'll go left kick to the body, right cross, left hook. Now, they might block the left hook or roll it, we're just giving it to them to see what they do. We'll imagine that they roll it and then we'll follow with the bolo. Okay, so left switch kick, catch them on the way down. That's the bolo, whip it, catch the head as they go down low. The spleen shot is used alongside the liver shot. Now, when you hit your liver, you hit your opponent on the right side of their body. When you hit the spleen, you hit them on the lower left part of their body. Now, if you give someone a good spleen shot, what happens is that they'll give it a lot of internal damage. Might pee blood for a few days, okay? And uh, it's really painful as well. So. Whereas you step to the left and dip down and throw your liver shot. When you throw your spleen shot, you want to take a little step out and then bury that in 45 degrees or a bit more into their body with your thumb up, whichever you fancy. So, I like to do it like this. I like to step and then hit under, okay? Or you can hit like, like that to the body, okay? Bit of a modified hook, okay? Either is absolutely fine, okay? So, spleen shot. Okay, and then you can add it into a combo. What we'll do, we'll go spleen shot. As it hits them and they fold over, okay, we're gonna go left elbow, right elbow, and then a left switch knee, okay? So, spleen shot, left elbow, right elbow, downwards, and a left switch knee. And that's the spleen shot, okay? If you're throwing and you want to land it, if you throw with your left hand, you're going to hit the liver. If you throw with your right hand, you're going to hit the spleen, okay? But it's the opposite on your body. On the right side of your body is your liver, and on the left side of your body is your spleen. Horizontal elbows are used a lot in Thai boxing, okay? The sharp part of your elbow tip is the bit that you want to land on your opponent's face. If it lands anywhere here on this soft tissue area, you're going to get big cuts, big scars, and lots of stitches in your face. Okay? Now, when you throw elbows, okay, you can throw them from boxing stance or more of a tie stance, whatever you fancy. Okay? You want to leave your arms loose. As soon as you tense your arm and try and engage all your muscles, everything goes really tight and really slow. So you want to leave them nice and loose and whippy when you throw them. Okay? Try and keep the other hand up high. Don't keep this hand low and elbow, they can block that and elbow you on the same time on the other side. Okay, so I like to throw my left elbow and keep my right hand up for a bit of extra protection and then switch and throw my right elbow. Okay, so let's have a look. Horizontal elbows. This is the left and then the right. Leave it loose and snappy. Okay, now let's put it in a combo. What we'll do, we'll go. Left elbow, right elbow, push away your opponent, right kick, okay? So, okay? 
Those are your horizontal elbows. Hands up, step in, leave them loose and rotate your body just a little bit and get a nice snap on the end of it. Okay, don't leave it tense. Upward elbows are really devastating. If someone's throwing wide hooks, you can step in, land it onto their chest or their face, or just even step in up the inside of their guard and throw your elbow upwards towards the ceiling. Okay, the easiest way to do it from your stance is to put your hand on your shoulder, just behind it, and that lifts it up nice and fast, nice and sharp. So you can do the elbows on both sides, the upward ones. We'll start with the left one. Make sure you take a little step inwards as well. And your right side. Get your hip and drive into it. Nice. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to start off and we're going to go jab, cross, hook, and then a right upward elbow, a left hook and a right kick. So it's going to go jab, cross, hook, right upward elbow, left hook, right low kick on the end. Okay? And that's your upward elbow. Point your thumb behind you, step in, keep it nice and tight, hit someone through the center of their guard, either on your left hand or your right hand, okay? Nice and loose, nice and whippy. A really great sneaky elbow is one that Anson Silva used in Cage Rage 16 against Tony Frickland. Okay, now what are you going to do? You're going to be in your stance, okay? Left lead or right lead is totally up to you. You're going to drop this front hand and then you're going to step inwards and big upwards back elbow through their guard, okay? Really weird unorthodox timing as well. As soon as you step in, you drop your hand and step in, you get a really big nasty knockout. Check it out on YouTube, okay? So, when you do it on the bag, you're going to be hands up, bouncing foot to foot. You're going to drop this hand, step inwards, and big upward back elbow, okay? Drop, step in, and hit right up the middle. Okay, you can do it in the other lead as well. You can step, drop, and hit in that lead as well. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so if you watch the video, okay, of uh, Anderson Silver in Cage Rage 16, that's all he finishes it with. Doesn't need a follow up, okay? So if you can land that nicely, okay, you don't need much else. We're not going to do a follow up today. Okay, you're just going to step in, big upward elbow through their guard, okay? Both sides works nicely. You'll throw a few punches and a few kicks before. And that's the back upward elbow, okay? Drop your hands, hit right up the middle. Hands up, back to stance. Diagonal elbows work really nicely if your opponent's hands are kind of about here, okay? Or you can get around the side of them as well, okay? Now, if you can't land a horizontal one straight across, okay, what you do, you go downwards at 45 degrees and come over the top of their hands, okay? So, horizontal elbows go like this, upward elbows go like this, and downward diagonal elbows go downward diagonal. Okay? I find the easiest way to throw an elbow in the direction that I want is to point my thumb in that direction. If I want it to go horizontal, point my thumb horizontal. Upwards, point my thumb upwards. Downward diagonal, point my thumb downward diagonal. Same thing, leave it loose. You can do it on the left side. And you can do it on the right side. Fold your arm over. So, let's put it in a combo. We're going to go lead leg left high kick. Then we're going to step down right cross left hook right diagonal elbow. And that's your diagonal elbows. Okay? You can also go upwards with the diagonals. Okay? But you can play about with that in your own time. The spike elbow is really horrible, okay? 
It leaves massive cuts down the inside of your face, okay, or on your collarbones, okay. Wherever it lands, it's going to be a lot of damage caused there, okay. Now, what you want to do, you want to lift up your arm and your body as high as you can, okay, and then you're going to step forwards and drop your weight down and hit your opponent, ideally in the centre of the face with the bottom of your elbow, okay. It's called a spike elbow because it spikes straight down into their face. Works a lot better off the rear arm, okay. Lead arm's not as powerful, I find, so we'll do it off the rear arm, okay. So, rear spike elbow, straight down, into the centre of their face. Okay, so we'll go for the combo. Double left kick, right cross, left hook, double right kick, then the spike elbow. Someone straight in the centre of the face. Nasty business. In the previous video, we checked out the spike elbow. You can also do that as a jump spike elbow, okay, which has got even more damage on top of it because you've got your whole body weight flying through the air, gravity pulling you down, and spike elbow in them on the head. Works well if you've got your opponent rocked, okay. So the spike elbow, you jump straight forwards and spike elbow them in the head, okay. You lift up high. And spike straight down, one more time. And spike straight down, okay? Works well if they're hurt or they're backing up and you're chasing them, okay? So what we'll do, we'll set it up with two big front kicks, okay? Left front kick, right front kick, you know that they're moving backwards, so you're gonna follow with a big spike elbow, okay? Chasing down. One more. Okay, so it's used for chasing. Jump up, fly through the air, spike elbow them when they're rocked and they're moving backwards, okay? Good game finisher. Next elbow is your spinning back elbow. So you're gonna be in your start, so your hands up. Your front foot steps across, you're going to look over your shoulder, see where the target is and you can either horizontal elbow or downward elbow, okay? But it's a spinning back elbow, okay? So you want to step, look, spin, straight back to stance afterwards. You can spin all the way through, if you want to, that's fine. So let's check it out in the bag. Step your foot across, look over your shoulder, spinning back elbow, okay? Let's put it in a combo. Okay, you're gonna be close range with it. Okay, you're not gonna be doing it from kicking range. Okay, so we'll be here. We're gonna go right uppercut, left hook, right cross, left hook and step, spin back elbow. Okay. And that's your spinning back elbow. Step, look, spin. Elbow straight back to stance afterwards. The next elbow we're looking at is your clinch elbow, okay? Paul Daly likes to use this one quite a lot. When you end up getting the good clinch, okay, you're gonna knee your opponent a few times, and what you do, you fake the knee. As they drop their hands to defend it, okay, what you do, you put your foot back down, but you elbow them in the head instead, okay? So, you grab your opponent, but, but, two big knees. You fake the knee, but then you elbow them in the head instead, okay? So, on the bag, it looks like this. You grab, two knees, fake the knee, it swings back, but you elbow them in the head instead, okay? Really nice one, this will work a lot, okay? Guaranteed, okay? So, bouncing foot to foot. That little switch just makes them think another knee's coming. Okay, if I go like this, I can go skip knees, 
I can keep repeating as soon as that knee goes back, I elbow instead. Okay? But you let the knee go back, make them think the knee's coming, release one hand off the head, but elbow them instead. One more time. Okay? Then you can just play around with it whenever you clinch someone. play around with it, you get the idea. As soon as you grab them, knee, knee, fake the knee, right elbow them in the side of the head. The destruction elbow is used when someone throws a jab or cross straight to your head. As you see it coming, you're going to lift up your elbows and you're going to try and destroy their hand as they punch towards you, okay? So every time they punch, the hand gets hit by a really solid, hard elbow, okay? They're not going to want to keep punching anymore, okay? If you've got MMA gloves, it works really nicely. You can break the hand on the first couple of shots. Okay, game over gives you a massive advantage. And you're just going to visualize that on the bag. So as soon as the punches come straight towards you, you're just going to try and hit their elbow them. Okay, obviously you're not letting them come this close to you. You're just out of range. You're going to be stepping backwards or angling and trying to destroy it. Okay, so you're here. You might be bouncing, throwing your shots. They go to hit you, destroy it, and then. Come back with your own things whenever you want to. You can use any of your elbows to destroy someone's hand, okay? Easiest thing to do is a front head block. So when they punch you, grab your head, let their hand punch straight onto your elbow. Guarantee it'll break it, okay? Really nice for you, not so nice for them. Or if you've got a bit more range and distance, whenever the punches come, you can horizontal elbow, downward elbow it, upward elbow it, and ideally trying to make the hand explode on your elbow. Okay, so it's used as a destruction. The last elbow we're going to look at is called the pec deck elbow. The reason it's called the pec deck elbow is because it's a similar motion of using the pec machine in the gym, okay? Now, what you want to do is hit with this inside point of your elbow right here. This works really well if someone's in their guard, their hands are a little bit low, and you can bring this up and hit them right on the inside of your elbow on the side of their temple. So it comes all the way up and around in this direction. You want to leave your arm really loose and snappy. Don't leave it stiff because it doesn't move anyway. You're going to be here in your stance, you can step forwards and go and whip it straight in. So when you're doing it on the back, take a little step forwards. So you might even be in clinch from uh, the clinch position. So you want to hit right with this inside point. And leave it really loose and snappy. And bring your hand straight back to your head afterwards. And then you can put it in a combo, for example. You might already be in the clinch. Let's go from the clinch. So you can go grab the two arms, two skip knees. You lift this one up and hit, and again, or you might be out of range, you might throw your jab cross hook, step in and peck their elbow afterwards. Your long knee is a rear leg straight knee that goes straight down the middle. So when I'm in my stance, what I'm going to do, I'm going to step forwards off my front leg, as I step I'm going to lift up on the ball of my foot. This brings my hips forwards, and then I'm going to lift up my rear leg and drive forwards with my hips, okay? I'm not just lifting my knee like this, I'm stepping in, and then I'm driving by pushing up and pulling my hip forwards and through. Now, if you want to, when you knee, you can pull your right arm down, which engages this hip even more to get even more thrust forwards. So, when I'm in my stance, my long knee looks like this. Lift it and then spear it forwards. Don't just go forwards with it. You need to lift and drive like a spin. And then go back to stance. So let's put it in a combo. We'll go switch left kick, right cross left hook, right long knee. One more. So that's 
your long knee, comes off the rear leg, step forwards, come up on the ball of your foot, drive your hips forwards and spear the top of your kneecap right forwards and through their chest. You can also do it to their head if they're in line with you just there. So that's your long knee. Let's take a look at your switch knee. When you're in your stance, your switch knee is going to end up coming off your front leg. So what I do, my rear leg steps forwards, my left leg switches behind me. As soon as it lands on the floor, I'm going to step up on the ball of my right leg, drive it forwards and then step back down in front of me, back into my stance. What commonly beginners do is that they'll do the switch and then step back here and then change your legs. That's okay, but ideally, if my left leg starts in front, I'm going to do the switch knee and then land straight back in front of me in my original stance, okay? Now, you can use this to cover a little bit more distance. If you watch my rear leg, if I just do my normal long knee, I can't reach it from here. But if I switch, this now becomes my rear leg. So as soon as my switch knee comes up, I land it and then I land back in my stance. So you might not be in range for the long knee. If you switch it, you'll cover a little bit more distance, okay? So let's take a look at the switch knee. Land and then replace your feet. You will cover the distance and end up closer to them. And the more explosive you use this foot on the bounce, the more power you'll generate. If you switch, stop for half a second. Knee, there's no power. You want to do it all in one go. Get a really nice straight explosion. And then you can put in a combo, for example. I like to throw my switch knee when my jab comes back. So I want to go one, two, three. And then as my jab comes back, I can switch knee. And again. Make sure you land that front foot down in front of you every time. One more. And that's your switch knee. The front leg switches behind, your knee with it. And then you land straight back in your stance with your hands up. A diagonal knee comes up at 45 degrees around the side of your opponent. Has the exact same mechanics as a roundhouse kick. Now, the reason you throw a diagonal knee is when you're too close to actually throw the kick. So, when I'm at kicking range, I can throw my round ass kick from here and it lands right around the side. If I get a little bit closer and I'm hooking, uppercutting, knee in, elbowing, and I try and throw my kick from this range, it just doesn't land properly. It's the complete wrong range. So if I notice that my opponent's hands are up and there's a nice open gap here where their ribs are or their liver or their spleen, what I can do is turn this foot and then come right around at 45 degrees, which is coming up as your diagonal knee. So you're in your stance, diagonal knee, turn your front foot, let your leg come up at 45, pull your right arm down to get extra hip thrust into it, and then land it, pointing your knee right around the side of the bag. Do it three times. And then you can put it in a close range combo. For example, we might go left hook, right hook, left hook, right diagonal knee. So with this close. And that's your diagonal knee. You can do it off the other side as well. I find it easier to switch and do a diagonal knee. So if it's doing it on my left leg and we're close to my opponent, I might switch it and then come in at 45 degrees simply because I don't find that stepping up there's a lot of power. But you can play with it and see how it goes. One more time, diagonal knee. Turn your foot, same mechanics as a round ass kick. Round ass kick, diagonal knee. Just keep your heel tucked to your butt to throw the knee. A pump knee is more of a defensive knee against someone who's trying to take you down. Uh, more often used in MMA against uh, a wrestler for a stand-up striker. So if I'm a stand-up striker, which I prefer to be, 
and we're sparring or competing and my opponent's trying to shoot in and take me down. Instead of doing a normal timey where I step forwards and drive my hips forwards into it, that's no good against a wrestler. The reason being is that wrestlers are really tough and they eat a couple of shots to get the takedown sometimes. So even if you land a really big knee on their shot, they might still take the knee but then grab your leg because it's committed and then finish with the takedown. A pump knee is a very quick pump straight up the middle like a piston. So I'm here, my opponent might be shooting in on my legs as I'm trying to defend, I see them shoot. So I pop it up, try and catch them right in the face and then get my leg down fast so I can move offline after. The difference between a pump knee and a Muay Thai knee is that you're not committing your hips. On the Thai knee, I'm driving. On the pump knee, I'm pumping it and then moving offline. That makes it quicker and the quicker I can hit them and get offline, then the quicker I can move and not be there for the rest of their driving takedown. So, a bit tricky to do on the bags. You can just do it out of range. You might throw your jab across, step back out, you visualize them going for the shot, you do your pump knee, and then you move up faster. Okay, if they're a good wrestler, they'll constantly be driving until they get that takedown. Um, so, as soon as your knee touches the floor, you want to move off. You move left or right, it's up to you. So visualize the takedown, come the in, move off the line. So this is done more visualizing away from the back. Move off, one more. So you hear you hit the bag, they come, pump it, and come back off the line. You wouldn't really do it off the front leg because, I don't know, I just prefer it off the back. I find it's quicker to get up and down and then move off. But it's up to you, okay? And then you just add it into the round, we just do 10 seconds. So I shout out, visualize when the wrestler comes in to take me down. So I'm striking. They come for the shot, pump it, move up the line. Then back on the band. They come for the shot, move. One more. So when I was competing, my, some of my game plan strategies was to keep it standing, some of them obviously take it down. But even when I'm sparring, uh, my game plan is to often keep it standing. I like to strike. So that's a good knee for me to use Puck against wrestlers who are trying to take me down. Doesn't commit my hips, it's short, fast and speedy. And then you angle off after. The next knee we're looking at is called skip knees. Now, what happens when you're in clinch is that if you can get hold of someone's head, what you want to be doing is throwing your knees to their body whilst pulling them in and also to their head. Now, this is highly powerful and you do a lot of damage with this, especially if you've got a good, strong clinch. You can, well, when you enter the clinch, you want to grab with one hand and the other hand, okay? Don't come forwards like this because they'll smack you straight down the middle. You want to lead with one hand to reduce your target area, then lock up the other hand. Then you do the MC hammer or the switch knee. So as you're pulling into the bag, you want to switch it. This leg goes down as this one comes back. And then I switch again. And those are your skip knees. Now, it's really important that you offset and off balance your opponent when you're clinching them. So what happens is I clinch them up, I go shh, shh, turn them, shh, shh, double them up, turn them again, shh, one, shh, two. Because you want to make them uncomfortable, you want to make them lose their balance and not give them the chance to get their hands in and get their clinch on you. So you can do the same thing on the bag. Link it up, start the in, shh, shh, turn it, shh, you might double up on the same side. You might do normal skip knees. And then when you exit, exit with your hands up. Do not finish your knees and then just step down like this. Bad habits, they'll punch you, okay? And then you just add in your skip knees into the round. For example, And 
toes through your skip knees, often in clinch, link them up, pull the head in, get a car crash effect, which means that you're pulling the head into your knee. Don't just hold the head and go like this, there's no damage. You want to link it up, pull the head downwards. And you can need them in the body or the head. Your choice. Curved knees are also done from the clinch position. Now, when you've got a good clinch, what you want to do, if they're close to you or there's not much space to knee down the middle, what you can do is lift up your knee out to the side and then you bring it inwards this way. You hit with the inside part of your knee. You can do it low to the leg, you can do it here to the body, or representing, you can pull the head down and knee him around the side of the head. So what I can do here is take this arm away and then knee him in the side of the head. And you can do it on both sides. So once you've got the clinch, you can go like this, one, low on the other side, body, body, or head, or head. And it's just the same motion of, uh, as a door closing. So you've got the head, your leg comes out to the side, you can bounce it out as well. And then as this leg comes around, curve it inwards, hit with the inside part of your knee. So, when you're on the bag, you've got hold of it. Sometimes, if you're a bit more athletic, you can really jump into it. So you go here and you go, really, get your feet off the floor, especially to the head. And then you just add an inch around, so you might go front kick, ground kick, enter, give them two knees, they close the distance, you're here really close now. And that's your curved knees. Link them up, bring it out, bang, right on the inside. I often do it to the leg as well, especially when I'm doing MMA rounds and we might be up against the... Uh, a uh, wall or a cage in 50-50, this arm's under here and you just knee in the leg. That makes a move and then you can go for takedowns and other stuff. So, curved knees work really nicely when there's not much space. Lift it out, curve it inwards. Jump knees are really cool, they're really exciting for the crowd to watch and they are very dangerous and cause a lot of damage. So, two ways of throwing your jump knee, you can either Start in front of the bag. You can bend both legs at the same time and get an explosive jump up and knee. Or you can lift up one leg and then switch it and knee with the other one. And then you can do the same thing the other way. So you might lift up this one and jump into your opponent. So, first way, bend, jump. Or the second way, double, uh, so switch it in the air to get your leg up, okay? And then you can just add those into your rounds. Use it to cover some distance if you want. Jump in. And that's your jump knee. Either bend both legs and jump straight up, or lift up one, jump on the other. And land straight back in your stance, ready to fire on and follow up straight after this. The next knee is called a double jump knee. Now, when you're doing a double jump knee, you've got two options. You can land it double on your opponents. You land the first one and the second one. Usually if their head or their body are a bit lower, I like to throw this one if they're shooting in for a takedown. So we're here like this, or you can do it to the head. You lift up one, and you land the other one. A little bit tricky to do on the bag, so you can just simulate the first one landing, and then land the second one afterwards. Do it right left or left right, and then straight into your stance when you land it. Um, I like to do this, as I said, against people who are wrestling against me. Especially if I throw the first knee, and they start to duck down and look for that takedown, that one can be used a bit as a fake. So the first one fakes, and then the second one lands straight in their head. And again, really off the rear leg, I like to do it. And it's a bit faster, 
and straighter than the jump knee. Jump knee I usually do to the head, but this double jump knee is fast and low and direct. You might land just the second one, you might land both. And then you can just add it into your pad round or background. Your double jump knee. Either use the first knee as a fake to land the second one, or if they're moving into it, land both of them. And then land in your start, so your hands up. The angled knee is used on the inside of my opponent's leg, often as I'm exiting offline after a combination. So, what happens is, if my opponent's leg is out like this and it's facing me just here, I'll throw my boxing combination and then as I step off line, I'll step and knee the inside of this leg. This is really good because if it gets, uh, if it lands on them really nice, it'll deaden the leg, knock them off balance, or even if you hit it hard enough here as you run out, it'll just sweep them a little bit and send them off balance. So, that's the angled knee. As you finish your combination, you're going to step off line. I like to go right, so my left leg goes on the inside of their lead leg, and I pump it here. And you can see that you get a hell of a lot of power with that. So that goes right on the inside of your leg there, and the force goes through it, really sends you off balance. It's a really sneaky little one to do. So instead of just finishing your combo and then moving out afterwards, this one you can do in kickboxing or tie boxing you knee the inside of the leg so you finish it and knee the inside as you exit. You might want to add a little bit of head movement as well and knee the inside of that leg as you exit off to the side. Or you can just run, you might go double jab and then step and hit them with it. That's also a good technique, especially if you're in close and you haven't got the room to kick Okay, because the distance is wrong. Finish your combo, step off line, and knee the inside of the leg. As soon as you finish, step knee, and then keep going around the back of them. Don't stay in front, because they're going to be facing that way. So you can use this to get off, and keep circling. One more time. Someone runs at you and gets their knee right on the inside of here. It's going to knock you off balance. It's going to take the leg away a little bit. And by that time, they're already off at an angle. And then follow with their next attack. So that's the angled knee. Step off line, hit them with it, and then square back up to hit them afterwards. The shin check to knee means that as soon as my leg has blocked my opponent's kick, instead of just stepping down and not throwing anything afterwards, I want to block in my legs, step forwards and in, and then knee them. Now, the reason this works well against a low roundhouse kick is because if I low roundhouse kick my opponent and they shin check just here, and then they step down to knee me up the middle, my body and my torso are here waiting for them in the middle because my legs got to come back faster than that knee comes up the middle. So what you want to do is shin check, step down, and knee them straight off the back. No hesitating. So here, I shin check, I step down and forwards. Don't shin check and step here, because you won't reach it. Shin check here, step, and knee them straight into it. One more. You can shin check on the other side, and knee as well. Find it a bit more comfortable on my lead side. So you can just add that into the bag. Might add any low kick. They kick you back, block it, knee them back straight away down the middle. We well, you went for the kick there. You can also counter the kick, you might go shin check, kick. But for this specific one, we're using the shin check knee. Now, a little bit more advanced is to do the shin check, 
but not step your foot down the knee, but to do it all in one go. So you go shin check, then knee. So it's like a half beat. So you're not going in one, two, you're going one, two. So you're blocking the leg and you're hitting back straight away. And that's more of an advanced option. You can just add in whichever one you want. I often do the first one, because I know that I'm grounded and I can push off this foot when it lands. And that's the shin check knee. So shin check, step down and knee, or shin check to a jump knee, which might land nicely to their face. But it's up to you. Have a go. Your lead leg front kick is the fastest, most direct front kick that you can throw out of all the variations. In order to throw it, you want to have your weight just on the back leg. What this does is let you rock back a touch, lift up your front leg and kick with it. Now, I see a lot of people when they kick, they'll lift up and kick and put their foot down and shuffle a little bit back to stance. It's okay, but the more accurate you can be in being back here in stance ready to go again, the better you are because you're already in position to throw something off that. So when you're on the bag, be bouncing, be rocking foot to foot, lean your weight backwards and kick the front kick right in the middle. You can pull your left hand down if you need to. So you have lost some balance at home a bit there. But on all of them you want to be here. Kick, land exactly where you need to to fire back again. One more. And you can land it to the leg. You can land it to the body, you can land it to the face. Your choice. And then you can follow up with a nice combo off that. So if you're here, you land a nice front kick, follow. One more. And that's your lead leg front kick. It doesn't work if we weights on it, because look, can't lift it up. I'm here, moving. Rock my weight back, don't shuffle your feet because it gives it away. Rock back, lift and kick. That's all it is, rock back, lift and kick. Not this. Or gives it away. You hear? Bop, 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 back down. Lift it and kick. That's your lead leg front kick. Now you can do your lead leg front kick on your front leg or you can also do a rear leg front kick which comes off your back leg. Now. This is good because it covers a little bit more distance than your front leg, which is good because it might catch your opponent out if they haven't got as good of distance in that you have. Now, when I'm here, if I keep my stance, so I try and lift my leg up and front kick, say I'm just out of range, I just can't reach it. If I keep my left leg on the floor, my right leg can hit it all day long. It's just because you don't really realize it, but this leg now becomes a rear leg when you kick and then as soon as the kick lands you want to land it back behind you so you've got your lead leg which is just out of range then you can use your rear leg and it's the exact same motion of kicking through a door okay if you're kicking through a door you don't just tap it and come back off it you drive your whole body weight through the kick so come up on the ball of your front foot lift up your knee drive your hips forwards and drive as far through that bag as you can. And really drive your opponent back. So you might go rear leg front kick, step back to start, chase them down with a nice big jump cross. One more time. Rear leg front kick, move your head, keep on the feet, step, and hit. Okay? So, off the rear leg, come up on the ball of your foot, Kick through the door and then back. That's where all the power comes from. It's not this. You want to kick through the door and then back. Okay? Rear leg front kick. I find the front kick's more snappy and quick. And the rear leg is more powerful. I like that one better. Your switch front kick is the exact same mechanics as a switch knee. So where I'm in my stance, my rear leg step forwards and I bounce this one off the floor. As it bounces up, I kick with it and I land it back in front of me. Okay, so if I do a switch knee, I land here. 
I do the switch front kick, I land back in front again. Now, the good thing about a switch front kick is that it covers a little bit extra distance than the lead leg front kick and the rear leg front kick. So, to land a perfect front kick on the front leg, I'm roughly about here, I lift and kick. If I go a tiny bit further back, I can't land this front kick on the front leg, but I can land it on the rear leg. If I go a tiny bit even further back, I can't land my front leg front kick, I can't land my rear leg front kick, but if I switch, I can land my switch front kick. The reason being is because when I switch, this leg now becomes the front leg. So now my kick's starting from here. And as I kick, my hips come forwards, and then I land back in my stance. So each of those front kicks are used at different ranges. I wouldn't really use my switch front kick from this range. I'd just lift and kick. Okay, by the time I switch, I'm already too close, so I'll probably go into a knee. So it's just understanding the different ranges. So, the switch front kick, you ideally want to start a bit further out than your lead and your rear leg. So we're here, we're bouncing foot to foot, we might fake something up high. And then come back in. And again, switch. Then go back. One more time. Start further than the lead leg and the rear leg. So I can't land my front leg, I can't land my rear leg if I switch. I can. And that's the switch front kick. Uh, you'll find playing around with the front kicks, they're used at different ranges, and there's the more efficient one to throw at the right time. There's nothing to say you can't throw the other ones, but usually uh, over my years of training, I find there's a more efficient technique over the others at the specific point of time. But have a play with them and see how you go. So switch front kick, switch your feet, kick, and land straight back in your stance afterwards. Now we're going to look at your karate snap front kick. Now this is totally different to a Thai kickboxing style of front kick. When you're doing the Thai kickboxing style of front kick, what you're trying to do is blast your opponent backwards with your full commitment of the hips and really driving them and sending them back by pushing your hips forwards and kicking through the back. This snap front kick is more from karate style, so the effect is a lot different. What you're trying to do is you're trying to lift your knee here and then stab it into their belly in a really fast stabbing sort of motion. Now, the, what this effect does, it doesn't really push them back, but it feels like you've literally been stabbed and it just knocks the wind out of you. It's really short, excruciating amount of pain that as soon as you feel it, and they start covering up, you can just unload with it afterwards. So look at the difference. You can do it with either leg as well, you might snap it at the front. Look at the difference, right? This is a tire pushing kick. This is a snap karate kick. Okay, see the difference? Tire push, karate snap. I'm not committing my hips, I'm lifting and snapping and stabbing it in with a ball in my foot. You can do it on the front leg as well. This is a push. This is a snap. Okay? Give it a try. It works cool in sparring against someone you don't like. Um, lift it and snap it out. And then back. No hip commitment. Lift and snap. It's all in the hamstring, the thighs and the glutes. Pushing time. Karate snap. And you want to get that stabbing motion right into their body. Ooh, nasty. A swing front kick is exactly like a swing as it swings forwards like this. Now, this is really good because uh, you don't really see it coming because you keep a straight leg. When I do my swing front kick, I do it off my rear leg. As soon as my opponent starts walking towards me, I have to get it just the right time. My right leg comes up and I let them empower themselves on the bottom of my foot and it acts like a really stiff battering ram, like that. Now, it works well in sparring, you've just got to get the right timing. If you go a bit too early, what happens is that you swing it up and they haven't moved forwards enough, so you don't get a good connection. If you go a bit too late, as this leg comes up, you kind of get jammed up and set backwards. So it's all to do with the timing. And it comes straight up, 
it's not like a normal front kick. A normal front kick, you see the knee and then they kick. This one comes right under their eye line and they just walk onto it. So it works really nicely. Now, to do it on a bag is a little bit tricky because it's not moving. You might work better on a swinging bag. But you can literally just lift your leg up to get the right distance. Let them hit with it. Or let yourself hit with it and then follow with a combo. And what it does, it kind of stops them in their tracks. So if it's being done to me, what happens is that I start my attack by moving forwards. Just as I move forwards, I get hit with it and sent straight backwards. So that's your swing front kick. You can't really do it off the front leg. It just doesn't feel right. It, I don't like it. I break right off the back because I've got my balance with this lead leg. So I'm here, I'm striking. I imagine my opponent walks towards me, lift it and then unload straight away afterwards. And again, I'm here, my opponent just moves forwards. I'm not moving into them this time. Some front kicks you attack moving forwards, so like the switch front kick. This one's more of a defensive front kick. As they walk towards me, swing it up, lay them stop dead in their tracks, and then finish with a nice combo. One more time, stop them dead, kick them, finish them off afterwards okay that's your swing front kick your leg just swings up like that but they walk straight into it right under their eye line okay swing front kick try it out the hopping front kicks used to cover a little bit of extra distance when your knees are already up in the air so what happens is sometimes when you're striking you might both lift your knees up at the same time because you both might be going for a technique or you just using it to gauge or block or just test the distance whatever okay but when your leg comes up here what you do you just push off the back leg and hop forwards into the kick so when you're doing it on the bag we're here i might just be out of range but we're just testing the distance my leg comes up and i hop straight forwards just to cover maybe a foot maybe two foot so we're here we're bouncing just out of range my front leg comes up i hop in and now I'm already in close to follow up in my combination. And that's called a hopping front kick. So check out some of the differences. This is a lead leg front kick. This is a rear leg front kick. This is a switch front kick. This is a hopping front kick. Okay. Lift up the front leg. Hop forwards off the back as you kick. So it's sneaky, you cover a bit of distance and you're jumping into them so it's attacking as well. So we're here, my front leg comes up and I hop forwards and in. Jump front kicks are really good because they cover a lot of distance and they're pretty tricky to deal with because you've got a massive kick flying straight towards you and there's a hell of a lot of power behind it. Now, when you do your jump front kick, what you can do depends on whatever leg you want to kick off. If I want to kick off my left leg, what I can do, I can lift up my right and kick with that one. If I want to kick with my right leg, I lift up my left and kick with that one. Now, to give you a bit of idea of how much distance I can actually cover, if I'm here, I'm all the way back, I'm probably about one, two, two square mats away, and then we're here on my opponents, maybe starting on the other side of the ring, I might step forwards first, and then fly in with a great big front kick afterwards. And then the uh, fight's on. So I step here, lift, jump in. And then we're in business, we're ready to rumble. You can do it a bit closer, that's fine. You can do it from this sort of range, that's totally cool. You grab extra power into your kicks. Now, just one thing you don't do is lift your arms out and not have a guard, okay? Because you can still get hit if someone takes a kick. Okay, now don't go like this. Ooh and kick with your hands away from your head. Still keep your hands up, keep it nice and technical, use it to cover a lot of distance. And then, then we're fighting baby. Try to use it here. And that's your jump front kick. You can jump up with both legs and kick as well, that's totally fine. So have a little play with the jump front kicks. It's used to cover distance mainly. You want to do a jump front kick from this sort of range. 
because you just can't. There's no, no space to throw. So come out, jump in, get a lot of power behind it. Notice how I'm using elbows close because if I land it, I'm probably going to be right on top of my opponent. So you're going to be in a close range using elbows, knees, hooks, mouth cuts. They'll work quite nicely there. And that's the jump front kick. You've landed your first front kick and it hasn't done too much damage and they're still there coming forward so you throw your second one straight away. So what happens is you can do it off the front of the rear again. You might lift up one leg and kick and then you're still there so you kick again straight off of it. That's a double pump because you pump about twice. So when you're on the bag, you lift, you kick, they're still there and kick them back straight away afterwards. You can do it on the front leg as well. That's called a double pump front kick. Don't put your foot down, it's too long. You might hit them, they're still there, it hasn't done much damage, they're already on top of you by the time you throw the next one. So you pump it. And again on this one. You can just follow up straight afterwards. One more time, the double pump. The first one doesn't learn clean, so you learn the second one as soon as they come back in here. It's a double pump front kick. Back to stance. The more advanced you get, the more you realise and understand the importance of angling. This means that when you throw your combinations, you don't really want to be in front of your opponent. You want to be angling off to the outside uh, of both sides of them. Now, the angle front kick is a great way of starting your front kick and staying or, or moving offline left or right. Now, if I just start in front and I just throw my kicks, straight down the middle, okay, against someone who's good, they'll easily counter me. So I want to get an angle. Now, if I want to kick off my left leg, I step my right foot out to the side here, and then I angle my front kick inwards at 45 degrees. Or if I want to kick my right leg, I angle my front foot out and then angle my rear leg in at 45 degrees. So we're here, I'm not doing this, straight in the middle, I'm going one, two, and then the other way, angle front kick. You can throw a punch down the middle at the same time to disguise them and make them think that you're still in the center. And then the kick comes. Or you can do it the other way as well. Okay, and that's an angle front kick. So you know if you're doing it right on the bag because you're hitting it on the sides. So let's start off just with the angle. So the angle I step left, kick my right leg. Or I step right, kicking my left leg. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, you can do the punch as well at the same time. So my angle off and punch, and then hit. Might be interesting with the range, but play it out a bit. You can just throw it as a fake anyway. Just to draw their hands up. And then once their hands are up, oh sorry, I messed up the footwork there. You follow. With your combo, one more time. Angle front kick. Let's do one more because I like this one. Oh, I always prefer to angle to my right because it's away from my opponent's power side. So if they're here like this, I angle this way to here. So one more, I angle. And that's your angle front kick. Move off 45 degrees, kick them at an angle, throw the punch as well to disguise your footwork as well. The last front kick we're going to look at in this section is the Jacko or the Jackson front kick, as in Michael Jackson. Now, this is also known as uh, kick fake number one in our grading system, but the reason why it works is because if I throw a low round ass kick, bang! And my opponent starts to shin check there. What that does is leaves their centre line open, right? So if we're here like this and the round ass kick comes around the side and they're shin checking, they're opening up their body for a front kick. So what you do, you do your best Michael Jackson impression. You go hee 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 like that and your leg comes out whoop, and then you change it into a front kick at the last second. You haven't got to do the sound effects. So my leg comes round and then I turn it down the middle and blast them down the centre line. 
Now the best way to set this up is to throw two right kicks early on. So I go right kick, right kick, fake it, and then go down the middle. You have to set it well. Flip that leg out. Straight down. And what that does is blast them straight down the centre. So when they block the kick, or they don't block the kick, that's the point of it. They lift their shin up and then they get hit down the centre line. Should send them backwards as they're on one leg. So one more time. The Jacko. Kick low hard. You have to sell that low kick. Sell it. Blast them down the midline. Try that one. That's a really high percentage one. It'll work loads of times. Do it one more time because I really like using this one. Lovely. I usually get that near enough every sparring session. I'll pull that off at least once. So it's a really easy, good one to uh, add into your game. Your lead leg roundhouse kick comes off the front leg and I like to use it more as a speedy kick to give my opponent more of like a flash knockout or just to catch them in the head to knock them off balance. If you're powerful with it, you can obviously knock them out. But a couple of ways to do it. You can either rock your weight backwards and kick or you can step up the rear leg. I like to lift it up and kick to the head with my lead leg kick. So I can step my rear leg up as it steps up I kick to the head and I get fast down to my stance. Don't have my leg up in the air for too long because you get easily counted. So that's the lead leg kick. You can go low, you can go to the body, you can go to the head. When you throw it, pull your left arm downwards as your hip comes up. Okay? So add that into your rounds. It works well as a long distance technique. So you hit, kick them in the liver. Follow up afterwards. Or kick him on the inside of the leg. Follow up. Or kick him in the face. Pop up. Okay. It's also good to use as your exit combo. You might go double jab, move backwards, and then flick it up higher just to catch him on the end. That's your lead leg round ass kick. Left leg in front, what you're going to do, you're going to lift it up and switch it behind you as your right leg comes forwards. As I do this, I lift my left hand up a tiny bit higher. Now, I'm going to turn my foot out to the right and let my left leg come around as I throw the right ass kick. As I do it to the bag, I switch my stance. I kick and I land straight back in front of me. Okay, you don't want to go switch, kick, land here and then go back. You can do, I mean, it's, just, it's more of a retreating one, that one. So I guess you could say you've got two options. You can switch, land behind and replace your feet. Or if you want to move into it, switch, and then move into the bag by landing forwards in front of you. So you've got a couple of options depending on where you want to end up. And you can go switch kick to the leg. You can go switch kick to the body. You can go switch kick to the head. And what you want to do is don't lift your leg up too long at the start. If you go like that, don't see it coming, it's too long. You just want to go boom, straight off the back. So we're here. Don't leave it for too long. Sometimes you see people that go, that big long switch. Don't know why. Do it fast. So you're here. Speedy and fast. Works well off the right cross, because my weight's now here, I can take my weight off of it by switching here, and kicking with it. So a nice combo to throw is a left hook, right cross, and a left switch kick. Left hook, right cross, left switch kick. One more. Make sure this right hand up. Sorry, this right hand stays up as well. Don't drop this hand low. Leaves you with no guard. This hand pulls down, this hand comes up. Rotate your feet, rotate your hips. Straight back to stance afterwards. That's your switch round ass kick off the front leg. 
Your rear leg roundhouse kick is one of the hardest kicks you can throw. Some people can generate up to 80, 90 miles an hour with this kick. So you can imagine this leg being like a baseball bat and swinging at your head at 90 miles an hour. That's why it leads to big knockouts, okay? Now, to throw the perfect one, step out a tiny bit and offline. This lets your kick come through the center. You've got to rotate on the ball of this foot, pull your right arm down, let your hip come forwards as your arm meets it in the center. Don't pull your arm and then kick, or lift your hip and then pull your arm. It all has to go through the center here at the same time. And you want to imagine that there's nothing in front of you. So you're chopping around, you want to ideally go in the complete circle. So let's see how hard I can kick, ready? So we can go low to the leg, we can go to the body, or we can go knock out to the head. And that should just be like lightning, you should generate a serious amount of power. Stay relaxed and don't force it. Keep his left hand up. And then you can just add an inch your combo. Classic combo, right cross, left hook, right kick. Head to the head. Head kicks are lovely. You can't really fight if you haven't got a good head kick. You need a good head kick. You need to be able to knock people out all day long. One more. So, power roundhouse kick. Turn your foot, pull your hand down, rotate everything, kick through them. Full speed, like a baseball bat at 90 miles an hour. Woo. The chopping roundhouse kick is used when someone's weight is all on the leg that you're attacking and it's slightly out like this and there's a nice angle to chop straight down on top of it. With the normal roundhouse kick, you're trying to kick across. With the chopping roundhouse kick, you're coming up and over and dropping your weight down and getting gravity into it. I like using this one a lot off the left hook. When I've pushed someone onto that leg and all their weight's on it, and I lift this up and chop downwards on top of the leg. So, a normal roundhouse kick comes across like this to the outside of the thigh. Chopping round our stick comes up and then over and in. There should be a nice big difference in it. And you're trying to, a bit like an axe chopping into a tree. This leg turns. It sounds a bit different as well. Don't know why. This leg turns round, chop up and over. And chop right on top of that head. So you're basically hacking away by chopping into it uh, continuously. You can throw any combination that you like, or add it in whenever you want. Make sure your weight leans over as well. You can take a little jump if you need to. That gets extra power into it. So maybe off a liver shot, you're here, step this leg out, and chop up and over. Or chop from here. All the way up and over. Flick it. One more with the liver. And that's a chopping round ass kick. This is a normal round ass kick. This is a chopping round ass kick. Chop up and down into it. Get better gravity, drop your leg, coming over and in this way. Jump round ass kick's pretty cool and flashy. Two different ways you can throw the jump round ass kick. Uh, I prefer to do it off my rear leg. I find it a little bit awkward off the front, so we'll do it off the rear. You can either bend both legs, jump up and kick, by turning your hips round and over and landing back in your stance. Or you can lift up your front leg and kick. Lift, and then switch it in the air. Make sure you pull your right hand down and land back in your stance. So, I'll do it off the uh, first variation. I like to jump straight up and kick. She might be punching and kicking. Hmm, jump up as 
high as you like, depending on how flexible you are. One of my students could literally jump above my head, he's ridiculously athletic, he's only young, 16, but the younger the better. And what you can do is bend your legs, jump up high, and land back in your stance straight afterwards. So that's your jump around ass kick. Use it when someone's rocked and they're moving backwards. Doesn't work too well when they're fresh and moving into you. You might, you know, be late on in the fight. You're hitting good, landing some nice combos. <laughs> they move back. Chase with a jump around ass kick straight afterwards. Enjoy it. The next round ass kick is a double flip round ass kick. I like to do this one going from low to high because if I keep my opponent low or even just fake it low to the inside of the leg, that gets me thinking about it and then what I do, I go low and kick them up high with it straight afterwards. So they're thinking about what's coming low and then the next one comes up and catches them in the face. You can land both of them if you want. Or you can just land the uh, second one, she might go afterwards. I usually use the first one as a fake, but there's nothing to say that you can't land both of them. And I usually use it as an entry. So what I'll do, I'll be just here from a low kick, low kick again, and then we'll fake it. Kick him in the head, and then follow up afterwards. So actually double flick around that kick. And again, one more time, go low to high with it. You can go mid to high, high to low, depending on how flexible you are. But I prefer to go low to high, it just works nice for me. So I'll kick them on the inside of the leg, fake it, kick them in the head, and then follow up afterwards. That's your double flick for an ass kick. You can also go to the same level if you want. If you're really flexible, you can go double flick to the head. But it's up to you, try it out. The shin drop round ass kick is nasty. It's basically dropping your shin like a solid iron bar forwards on top of your opponent's thigh. Now this was taught to me by my instructor James, he did it once to me and I just cried for about 10 minutes. Okay? What you do, you turn your weight over for the round ass kick but then you step in and drop your shin down right on top of their thigh. So it doesn't come around the side, you come up and it goes horizontally and then downwards. Okay, call it a shin drop or a shin drop special. And what you're trying to do is get that bag to move. So, uh, by dropping all your weight forwards and through it and downwards on top of their thigh, their lead leg. So my foot turns and I come here. And I see how much force you get into it. And then that, that's about 80 odd kilos, maybe even 90 kilos. And my weight is forcing through it. I'm pushing, dropping straight down onto it. Might not look like much, but trust me, do it on your partner, okay, in training. Get them to stand their leg there, come up high and then drop your shin straight down on top of their leg. Leave it loose, leave it heavy, and it should, should uh, do a lot of damage if you get it right. Don't like scrape it like this or push into it like that. You want to drop your weight, it's called a shin drop, so lift it. Drop your shin into it. One more time. This is where you might be in front of them here. Your leg comes up maybe as a cross check against the round ass kick and then you might drop down straight onto that other leg or you might just start attacking it. So you're here and force it straight down with your shin on top of that thigh. Try it. Trust me. Now what we're going to look at is the cut kick. Now a cut kick is when my opponent throws a round ass kick here maybe to my body or to my head. As their leg comes up what I do, I cover it or I kick their supporting leg before this leg reaches me. So my opponent's here, I see the leg come up here, so I cut kick that support leg out. That was a lot of power. Okay, so they're there. I see and visualise the kick coming up towards me, so I kick their support leg out. What that does is send them sweeping straight over and landing on the floor. Okay? So as their leg comes up, you're kicking this support leg. You want to aim for the calf or the lower part of the ankle, and that's 
going to do the most uh, damage. Don't kick their thigh because that's quite up high. You're not really going to sweep them there. Take out low by their ankle. So when you're on the bag, you just visualise the kicks coming towards you. For example, so we're here. I might cover a couple of shots. Fire back. They kick me. I might shin check it. Fire straight back. They kick me. I see it coming, so I cut kick straight underneath. As we said before, the bag is all about visualisation. So you can't just stand there and hit it all day long. You're here, you're realising what's going on, you're visualising the fight. Block the kick, hit that. I kick him, I might shoot at the kick, hit back, they kick me, I see it. And I cut kick straight underneath and uh, take out their supporting leg. You know, on the left side or the right side. So if their left kick comes here, or right cut kick, their right leg. If their right kick comes here, I left cut kick their left leg. Left, left leg okay? So it's called cut kicks. You're cutting away their support leg when their kick is up in the air. So on the bag, visualise the kick. You hear you're striking. The kick comes. Take out that support leg. That's known as cut kicking. There's different variations of cut kicks, but that's enough for now. If you can start sweeping someone, as soon as their leg comes up to kick you, you're doing pretty well. The chasing round ass kick is used when an opponent's really rocked and they're moving backwards and you're chasing them down to unload a big right round ass kick. Now, I'll do it at an angle so you can see me a bit better because there's not much uh, space with the blue wheel there. So, if I've hit my opponent hard and I'm chasing them down, if I kind of run like this to chase them, I can't really land a good kick at the end of it just because I don't know what side there's going to be an opening and my feet are kind of like switching so I'm kind of, it just doesn't flow nicely. A chasing round ass kick is where I land a good shot of my opponent, bang, they're rocking, uh, they, they hit and they're moving backwards. So I take two bounces, one, two, while standing my stance and then I go my last kick on the end of it. Now that keeps me composed, it keeps me in my stance, it gives me a nice structure when I'm moving forwards just in case anything does come out of the blue and start coming back at me. And it lets me bounce up and unload the last kick on the end. So the chasing round ass kick, you're going to have to judge the distance correctly for yourself when you're on a bag. You land your big shot, bang, you're chasing down one, two, three. And that's the killer shot at the end, that's like the final blow to put the nail in the coffin. So here you're bouncing, but, but I land my big shot, boom, they move back, one, two, three. Get the hopping and the bounce. On the last one, you're really pushing off your feet. Bang, one, two, three, kick. Okay, one more fast speed, chasing round ass kick, land your big shot, boom, to the face, they move back, one, two, and land the last round ass kick to finish him. It's called a chasing round ass kick. And stay strong, don't run him like this to finish. You've got no stance. Chase him down, hunt for that last killer, killer shot. So you go bang bang, they're down one, two, one. Take their head off with that last kick. The 720 is one of our black belt level techniques that you need to learn. And it's something to do when you miss a round ass kick and you're a bit over committed. Now, sometimes when you throw your round ass kick, if they step back and miss, uh, sorry, if they step back and you miss, you don't really want to lose your balance too much. Okay, you want to go back to start straight afterwards. But sometimes you throw the kick and you end up spinning all the way around just because there's a lot of power. Now, what you do when you're here, you throw the round ass kick, if they keep moving out of the way, as soon as you spin, your leg's going to keep rotating round, your left knee's going to come up in the air, and you're going to jump round that kick on the end. And that's known as a 720. So you miss the first one, or if they just keep moving back, you can chase them down with it. So the first one misses, knee up, and then you land the second one. You can do it to the body or the head is best, but you can judge it and see where the gap is. So you throw the first kick, they move out of the way, lift up, and then land the second one straight off that. 
And then when you're close, you can follow up with a nice combination. It's done in three stages. Miss the first kick, chop it down. Spin all the way around. Left knee comes up, right leg kicks on the end. Okay, so let's take a look. Miss the first one. Knee up. And again. One more time. Out of range. Throw the kick, they miss. Visualize. And mash is 720. Throw the first kick. As soon as it misses, throw the second round ass kick straight off of it. The rock back side kick is used often when my opponent throws a jab or a cross to my head. And what I will do from being in my stance is be side on slightly to start for the side kick, rock my weight back, lift up my lead leg and then extend it out to the side and land it back in my stance. I'm not really moving my feet too much from here. Might be here, we're punching. As their punch comes back, I rock back and lift and kick. So my weight just comes back slightly, my lead leg comes up and then I extend it outwards underneath their punching line. Usually because when they jab or cross, their body section opens up here. So that's a perfect time for me to rock back and kick. So you can just have that in whatever you like. As they throw the jab on the cross, rock back and side kick. Visualize the jab and kick afterwards. And that's the rock back side kick. From being side on in your stance, rock your weight backwards, let the weight come all off this leg, lift it and then kick it straight out underneath. The step up side kick is used more as a traditional footwork side kick where your rear foot steps up to your front foot. This lets you cover a little bit more distance and engage uh, closing the distance and hitting your opponent. So usually what I do, I start a touch further back, my rear foot steps up here to my front foot as I'm, my body's already side on. As it steps up, I lift up my leg and I kick and I replace my feet. Um, you can land straight down in front if you want to, that's fine. Or you can come back the way you came. So your back foot steps up, I replace my feet and I go back to stance. That's called a step up side kick because I step up and then throw my side kick. When you side kick, you can pull your left hand down if you want to, to get your hip going forwards and your right hand comes up or rear hand just to um, defend against any straight punches to the head. So one more time, my rear leg steps up and then I come back here to stance. So let's add it in. Step up, back down to stance. You can't break from this range. It's too, too uh, much of a long range technique. So you've got to move back, break from out here. Now, my favorite setup when I'm doing this is just to simply jab them high. If I jab them high, mainly towards the forehead, what that does is get them bringing their hands up to block it, if they're blocking, and it opens up their midsection, okay? So if they're tight like this, my jab high, their hands come up. So I just throw that as I step my rear foot. So I'm here, I turn sideways and go jab high, and then kick. That disguises my footwork as well. So as I jab, my back foot steps up, then my left leg comes out on the second kick, and then I replace my feet. So one more time, add in the setup, then back, and again. So whenever you throw in this step up side kick, you can set it up with a high jab if you like. to disguise your footwork. The hopping side kick is exactly what it says. So you're gonna 
lift up your front foot just out of range. So we're here, if I throw my side kick from here, okay, I know that I'm just going to miss it. Okay, so I'm just out of range. When you get good at distancing, you can really judge your distancing, which helps a lot when you're, when you're fighting and sparring. So when I'm in this distance, I know my kick's going to miss. So what I do, I lift up my front leg. My opponent might think that he can't, I can't reach him, but as my leg comes up, I hop in forwards off the rear leg just to make up an extra two or three inches so that kick lands on the end. So, we're here. I know that my kick can't land. It's going to miss every time. So I step, I lift, and then I hop in at that last second to close the distance, okay? So, let's do it two times. Turn sideways, front leg lifts up, rear leg comes in, pop inwards. Watch my rear foot, this is how you travel with it. Turn, step a little bit if you want to. Leg comes up, I can't kick from there. So I step, I lift, and then I hop. And you strike with the heel. Okay, one more time. Hopping side kick, turn sideways. Step up a touch if you need to. This leg comes up, hop in and extend the leg. Hopping side kick, okay, just when you're starting, just out of kicking range. Lift up the leg, hop in three inches, that lets you hit the target. The angled side kick is really, really, really damaging to your opponent's leg, especially their knee. So what you're trying to do when you angle and side kick is I step off line at 45 degrees, my leg comes up and I kick sideways into the side of their knee. Now obviously your knee's not designed to go side to side like this. It's only designed to go forwards and backwards. So if you get a nice heel going through this bit here, you're gonna mess up all the ligaments in the knee. You might even snap the knee, dislocate it, but it's gonna do a lot of damage. So, you can also do it to the inside of the knee. So, if you imagine my opponent's here facing this way, okay? I can step right and then hit the outside of their leg, or I can step left and side kick to the inside of their leg. So you can strike it coming this way or this way. And that's seriously painful, okay? So, on the bag to get the angle side kick. Quite often when you side kick, you're gonna be side kicking here, right down the center. But you wanna get the angle first. So to do this, my right foot steps out first, then my left leg comes in towards the outside of the kneecap. And I try and break the knee. Or I can come to my left first, then my right leg comes up, and then I side kick to the inside of the knee. So one more time. Step right, kick left, or step left, kick right. And then you can just play around with that, just for 10 seconds or so. I go to angle, break the knee, Angle the other way, attack the leg, step, angle, step outside, attack the leg. So that's called the angled side kick. You're trying to come in at an angle and mess up their lead knee. You could do it to the body as well. I just find that sometimes when you're coming in at an angle, They've got their elbows in and it's quite hard to land. But that knee's there all day long and you're going to do a lot of long-term damage to that knee. Hit it really hard, mess that up. It's about six to nine months, even longer, uh, for them to be out. So it's not a nice move, but it is a move, okay? So step, and then side kick the inside or outside of their knee. Nasty business. The next side kick you can do is called the jump side kick. When you're in your stance and you've got your hands up, turn sideways, bend your legs, jump up, and then kick and land back in your stance with your hands up. I find it works better off the front leg because my hips are already turned this way. So do a little squat, jump up, kick and land back in my stance. But that's okay, I prefer to do it as a running jump side kick. So do it from back here, Ooh, get a bit of distance, this is really good, maybe when you're starting a fight and your opponent's on the other side of the ring or the cage and you want to put some pressure on quickly. So the bell goes, ding, 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 you want to run up, lift up, jump sideways, and then kick, okay? You might go to the body or the head, 
just because it's quite athletic. And then as soon as you start the fight, you hit it, you turn sideways, jump up, and then you into business. So that's your jump side kick and your running jump side kick. Both of them are in the air. Keep your hands up as soon as you jump. Make sure you land in your stance afterwards, ready to follow up with your combination. The cross step side kick allows you to cover a lot of distance when you're doing the side kick. So it's used when you're quite far away from your opponent. Now, if I'm starting back here, okay, I won't really do it from there because I can travel more distance here. What I can do when I'm in my stance and sideways, my rear leg is going to step behind my front leg. As it does, my front leg then comes up and then I side kick off of it. But you want to do it as one fluid continuous motion. So I'm back here. I'm about one, two, nearly three mats away. So my hands are up and bouncing foot to foot. I step first, my rear leg steps, and then I side kick straight off the afterwards. And you should be able to get a lot of power with this because your whole body's moving forward. So we're here. I go step first, my rear leg crosses, and then I side kick on the end of it. So it's called a cross step because my rear leg steps, crosses behind my front leg. And again, and you take a little half beat in between them to keep your momentum going. One more time, cross step. Now, you can't do it the other way. If I step my rear leg in front of this leg, my leg gets tangled up, so it won't really work. I mean, if you really try hard, you might be able to do it, but it just doesn't flow nicely at all. So with your hands up, elbows in, rear leg steps behind, extend your body out, and throw that cross step side kick. One more time. So we're here, my opponent might be backed up on rocks. I go step cross, and drive straight through. That's the cross step side kick. Take one step, rear leg steps behind, and then kick and go straight back to stance afterwards. The jump spin side kick can be performed in two different ways. Firstly, if you're quite athletic and uh, springy, you can be slightly side on, you can bend both legs, and jump up and kick from where you are. Or, if you want to, you might be punching, you might step this foot across, look over your shoulder, then bend your legs, and kick. So those are the two different ways. First way, bend your legs, jump up, and kick. Or the second way, step across, and kick. And then you just add an inch around whenever you like. I step out, I see the distance. Throw the spin side kick. Use the long range. Hit with the heel. Straight into the body. One more. You might be here. Fake up high to get the hands up. And land that spin side kick. So, that's your jump spin side kick. Jump up from where you are, spin kick, or step across first. And then jump up and kick. Your choice. The circling side kick I call uh, because it's based more from Savat. Now, what happens is when you do this side kick, I'm more than often aiming for my opponent's lead leg on this one. Uh, I like to get off my rear leg. As my rear leg comes up here, what I do, I bring it up in a circle and it can touch my rear hand up here nice and high. And then as this comes up, I come downwards right on top of my opponent's leg. So, I'm here, I'm bouncing foot to foot, known as a chasse lateral or in the best French accent as you can say it. This rear leg comes up, as it comes up I side kick straight downwards. This gives a little bit more circular force into it and gets my uh, knee up nice and high to drive downwards. Rather than just lifting here and side kicking on my rear leg, looks nice as well. I come up here and I circle and stomp straight downwards. So, that's more of a circling side kick based on the back. So when we're here, I'm in my stance, my rear leg comes up, and I drop it straight downwards on top of their thigh. So, it looks a bit like this. And you can bring it up nice and high to drop straight down afterwards. One more facing the camera, so I come here, 
and drop straight down on top of it. And then you can add that in. You get a lot of power in that one. One more. So, that's a circling psychic, I like to call it. Coming from Savat. Rear leg comes up, circle it, drop straight down, and attack their leg. The stomp kick is another lead leg attack that I use off my rear leg. So, I'm attacking my opponent's lead leg. It works well if they're not bent like this and their legs up nice and straight. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lift up my rear leg and I'm gonna stomp straight through and straight downwards on their kneecap. Now your knee's not designed to bend this way, so as soon as you get to full extension and that foot is stomping through the kneecap, you're gonna do a lot of damage. So, we're here, my rear leg comes up and I lift my weight up, then I drop it downwards and I hit right with the bottom part of my heel going through their kneecap. I'm not stopping on it, I'm going through their kneecap, okay? So when you do it on the bag, it looks a bit like this. Uh, maybe it's a bit like the motion of just stepping over a log. As you step over the log, you're gonna drive down and break the knee. And that should be really clumpy and heavy and powerful. See how much weight I'm moving just with this uh, rear heel? And that is seriously nasty. Keep your hands up, or if you want to, you can lean your weight backwards a little bit. It's up to you. I always prefer just to be here with my hands up. You can do it off the front leg, just a bit. I don't know, I prefer the rear leg. Most of my techniques are favorite sides for just because they flow nicer. So, when you're striking, you can add it in however you like. Stomp kick finished. So that's the stomp kick. You use it to break their kneecap and pop it the wrong way. Step straight over and through, and then back to stance. This technique is one of my tricks that I use um, when I miss a roundhouse kick. Now, when you miss a roundhouse kick off the rear leg, you've got a couple of options. You can throw the roundhouse kick, miss, and spin all the way around back to stance, or you might miss it and then bring it back to stance here. Now, if you look at my position after, I'm ready to strike again. So even though I've missed, I'm here and I'm ready to throw back whatever I need to. In this trick, what you do, you throw your round ass kick, and then you leave it here, just here, completely out of position, with my back to my opponent, my guard's in the wrong place, they're about here, they're gonna start moving in towards me. But, as soon as they start moving in, I lift up this leg, I'm in the perfect position to throw my side kick. So it looks like I'm out of position. I can't throw much here, like punches or knees or elbows or certain kicks. But as soon as they step forwards to try and counter me, I throw that side kick straight off and into them. Usually it works well if you leave your chin open. Because what happens, you're here, I leave the gap there as they lean forwards with a cross. You side kick straight underneath their arm and you can land it into their body. So you can just draw that on the back. This is um, one of our kicking fakes. I think it's kick fake number seven that we add into our uh, grading syllabus as well. So it looks a bit like this. You miss the kick, land, and side kick. That's a bit of a jump. You haven't got to jump here. Just make sure you look at position. And that's used when they're coming back in towards you. You want them to walk onto it. You can move forwards a bit if you want. You can go here. Or they can just move onto it. It's your choice. So when you're adding it on the back, spray your powers. Miss the power. Stay on it. Side kick them in the body. So when you're hitting the back, sometimes your techniques have to miss. It's like they were in a fight. That one lands, that one misses, but I counter with the side kick anyway. So, miss the side kick, land just out of position, sorry, miss the round ass kick, land just out of position, 
as they start coming in, boom! Perfectly set up for the side kick. Spinning back fist is mega powerful because as you spin, you generate centrifugal force, which means that your force ends up moving outwards from your body and hitting with the back of your fist. Now, when you, well, when I like to throw, it looks like this. And I land back in my stance. So, as I spin, you can either hit with the side of your glove, which I find is more powerful, because that's the side of my fist where there's no padding, or you can hit with your knuckles as you come around. That's another option. So you can hit sideways or this way, okay? I'll show you the sideways one first. So as I step and hit, it's a bit more clumpy. Or you can hit with your knuckles, it's up to you. But I prefer the side of the glove because there's not a lot of padding there. So you end up doing more damage. And when you hit it, you've got two options. You can hit it and go back the way you came. Or you can hit it and spin all the way through. Which is your choice. So it looks a bit like this when you're striking. And you can see that it's really heavy, really clumpy, really powerful. Make sure your front foot steps across the centre line. Look over your shoulder at the target whilst keeping your other hand up on your head and then hit with the back of your fist. Okay, one more time. Step, look, spin. And land back perfectly in your stance. There's also variations. Um, sometimes when my opponent's hands are slightly wide, what I'll do, I'll step across and come up the middle. Boom. And you're coming up this way under the chin, which is pretty funky. Or you might go round low to the body. She might spin the back fist to the head. The next time they see you spinning, they go to block it. She go down to their body. Then you start being a bit funky with it. You can do jump spin back fist. But it's actually to play around with. Main thing is that you keep it tight, step across, hit, and land back there. Spinning back fist. Spinning side kick is a very, uh, sorry, a very, full, a very powerful kick. Um, but what you want to realise is that it's not a spin as in a 360 spin. When you're doing a spin side kick, you're not trying to come around this way and keep going in a circle. It's more of a step, look, and then kick straight back shh, up the middle, a bit like a donkey kick. Okay? But, yes, yeah, so that's the difference. You're not really spinning completely. You're going here, you're stepping and looking, and then going straight up the middle. So directly in front of you, as you step and look, this leg comes up, and then you throw your spin side kick. Then you can do it all at once, full speed. You've got two options again with the spin side kick. You can land it, come back the way you came, or land it, and then go through back to stance. I like to throw up my rear leg because I find that it travels further. So it's from here, it's got all this distance to travel. So you can throw it off whatever leg that you like. And you can just play about with it, add it in whenever you want. Get the distance. And then spin the side kick. Now let's take a look at your spin heel kick and your spin hook kick. They're two different kicks. A spinning heel kick is where I step, look over my shoulder, and my leg is straight as it comes around. This is full 360. I step, look, and I hit with my heel going round in a straight line. So the back part of my heel is the part that I'm landing with on the side of their head. Um, the spinning hook kick is where I kick and I hook it inwards at the last second. So I spin and then I hook it by pulling in my leg just at the very last split second. So I hook and pull it back into my butt. Now, when you're doing it on the bag, you can hit the bag with your spinning heel or hook kick. I'll do a spinning heel kick because I like that one better. So you can go here and then go back to stance. Or you can miss the bag, so you can start and just miss it when you strike with it. 
So it looks a bit like this. Uh, I'll hit it a couple of times. And if you get, uh, <coughs> if you find that hitting it is messing you off a little bit, you can just spin through. So this time you just glance the top of it. Just let your foot glance along it. Smash your spin heel kick and your spin hook kick. Spin heel, the leg is straight. And the spin hook, you hook it into your butt at the last second. The spinning crescent kick comes around the side of my opponent's face. And I'm trying to hit with this side edge of my foot. This bladey side bit just here. So what it looks like when I'm in my stance, I'll face this way, step, look, and it comes up and over, same as a crescent shape, so the side of the moon if it was flat here, so it comes up and over just like this, step, look, spin, here with the outside part of my foot, and when you do it on the back, same thing as the spin heel or the spin hook kick, you can hit the side of it, or you can let your foot brace along the front part. Just like that. So I'll play about, I'll add them both in. So I went for a normal crescent kick there. Normal crescent kick is like that. So you can add crescent kicks in as normal. Or miss it. So that's your spinning crescent kick. Spin, hit with the outside part of your foot, land it exactly back where you need to. You don't want to spin, land, have to shuffle your feet around. It takes too long. As soon as you spin, land it exactly back in your stance. This spinning technique that we're looking at is known as the dragon's towel. Um, and it's similar to when you see a dragon not a real life dragon, but in the movies and it's whipping its towel fast and you're trying to cut kick your opponent's supporting leg as they're kicking you. So if my opponent is in his stance and he throws a big right head kick here, what I'm trying to do, just as the kick comes up halfway and it's accelerating towards my head, I come down and I cut their support leg with the bottom, uh, back of my heel. So a bit like a dragon's towel swinging around. So as their kick comes up high, I drop low, I can support myself if I need to, and I cut away their base. You can just drill that on the bag whenever you want. So we're here, I visualize the kick coming, I come down, and I sweep that supporting leg. Obviously a very high risk move and quite fancy, but it looks really good if you pull it off. Um, I used to spar with this guy called Martin Lowe, you know, I travelled around uh, in Thailand, lived in Thailand for a bit. He was a good heavyweight, sorry if you mind me saying this Martin, but he was a good 90, 95 kilos, maybe even 100 kilos, and he would do this move and it'd just take everyone out. <laughs> Pulled it off like three or four times during our sparring sessions and it works really nice if you get the hang of it. So, when you're on the bag, Set them up with a big right kick. As the right kick comes back, spin and hit it and chop away at their leg. If you want to, let it go through the middle. That keeps it a bit more graceful, but it's up to you. One more time. I kick. They kick back and I sweep their leg. So I imagine it's my towel whipping around, cutting away their support leg. Now let's take a look at striking from the mound. Just gonna look at jab and crossing. Now, when you're on top of your opponent, there's a hell of a lot of things you need to be doing. Just some basic points, squeeze your knees together, get your hips up to bury your weight down on the punches, but not too high where they can offset your balance. Pinch your feet into the sides of their body and start with your chest down low, okay? And your hands wide, so keeping your pressure down on top of them. Now, when you want to punch, you can pop up and blitz. Do not do little ones like this. 
there's no power. You want to lift your elbows up as high as you can. Like your front crawling in a swimming pool. Okay, so we're here, and I work the jab cross with high elbows. Keep your pressure down, stay on top of him. Double up in the same hand if you need to. Blitz hard. And then pressure down after. That's how you finish a fight. From the mat, high elbows, big punches, hard and aggressive. Hammer fists work really well in the mount and also in side control, I like to throw them from these positions. When you're throwing hammer fists, do not keep your arm tense the whole time because what will happen is that it stiffens it up and you can't really generate much power. This is me hitting it full power with my arm stick. Okay, but what I want to do is leave it as loose as possible and then clench it at the last second. That's how you hit with some serious power. Okay, you can do it off the right side or the left side. Even if their hands are up like this, that's going to start sneaking through the middle gaps and coming around the sides a little bit as well with your jabs, crosses and hooks. Now, what you can also do is when you're transitioning into different positions, you might be hearing side control, is hammer down with your hammer fist to the head as well. So I pop up while I'm keeping my underhook, I lift up high, and then I pop down, get my hand under the head and control them. So you might start off in mount and then transition to the different positions. So let's just do your hammer fist working from mount to different side controls. So we're here and I start to go to work for 10 seconds. Knee on belly. Punches. Drop down. Step up over. Spin. Go new stuff. All the way. Punch. So that's using your hammer fists. Leave them loose and then clench them just at the last second. So we're here, my arm's really loose to generate the momentum and then I clench it at the last second and I smash down on my opponent's head. Works well for mount and side control. You can get in other positions as well. So try those out in the bag. Elbows are lethal from top position, uh, mount position and side control or anywhere on top and you're dropping down elbows on top of your opponent's head. You've got different types of elbows like spike elbows, diagonal elbows, horizontal elbows. Um, but we'll just look at a main point that you want to do when you're throwing the elbows. Now, if I'm here and I pop up to throw my elbow and my opponent bridges or changes position as I'm throwing this, more than likely I haven't got any base and I might fall over to one side which isn't good as I'm off position and they'll be able to escape easily. So, what you want to do is post an elbow from mount position. I bring my hand a little bit closer, just here next to their head, whilst I pop up and then I elbow downwards. And then I can come down here on this side and elbow on the other side. And you try to hit with their elbow point right onto their head and cut them open to finish the fight and knock them out. So we're here, I might punch, have a fist and elbow now. Change. Pop up. So that's posting with the elbows. When you're in side control, you can also post on top of their head. So we're here, I get to side control. I push the head down to the floor. As soon as there's pressure here, I drop my elbow on top of their head. So we're here, I'm controlling. Put my hand. Here. Step up, punch. Change the other side. Drop. Pressure down. And then hit. So the main thing with elbows, don't throw them without having any base. Either put your hand on the floor, 
and elbow, or put their hand, put your hand on their head and elbow. Hush, hush, when there's pressure there. And that's how you destroy someone with elbows. This move's called the Hulk Smash because you use all your energy in your arms and hush, smash down with both hands like a double hammer fist onto their head. Now, you know, you're going to have to see how it goes in the fight. You might have them rocked and their hands move right around the side from the hooks. So after the hooks, you bring up both hands hush, and you hit them okay, with both hands at the same time. Mega powerful. So instead of just having one hammer, you get in hush, two hammers at the same time. And you can double up this shot as well. So if we're mixing it up, Hit with the shoulder and punch. Single hammers. Double hammers as well. So that's called the Hulk smash. Lift up both hands. Be careful of your base and your posture and your balance. Lots of things to consider. Lift up both hands. Hit them with your hammer fists and your forearms as well. See if they're covering like that. Even if they're covering and you hit their forearms. You can see how much power that's generating. Still enough to bounce their head off the canvas, cause a knockout. So even if you're not hitting them with the punch to knock them out, their head smacks off the canvas from behind, you know, that's a good chance of knocking them out as well. So that's your Hulk smash. Let your body weight come through. You just turn into the Hulk. whilst on the floor. I like to knee my opponents a lot in my cage fights. Um, one of the knees I like to do when I'm in side control, so I spin here to side control, I can put both hands on them. Got a few different knees you can do here. You can do a short knee into their head or to their body, or you can put your hands on them, swing this up, and start to knee them in the body as well. So you get extra gravity driving into them. Or, if we imagine that now my opponent's turned the other way and this is their head, when you're here in side control and you're facing them, you might be hitting their head this way, I might change and then change to modified side control. So their head's here and their legs here. And what I can do is start kneeing them in the body and to their legs as well. So if they're defending my mouth by putting their leg up, I can start striking here to their leg and really start going to town this way. So that's like a modified side knee into their body. So, let's imagine my opponent switch around again. This is their head, this is what it looks like. And you start adding in everything from before. So you've got punches, hammer fists, elbows, Hulk smash, and the knees as well. Just go about 20 seconds working. last night at the academy and it's a great kick you want to imagine that your leg is an axe and you lift it above your head and chopping straight down on top of someone's uh, head, skull of their head or it might glance the front of their face or it might land on their collarbone or even their chest or the front of their leg so it's just trying to come straight up and then straight down just along their center line and scraping downwards with the bottom of my heel uh, legendary fighter Andy Hug. This was his classic, uh, you know, super move that he used a hell of a lot of the time. So you can train with that. Now you can do it two ways. You can either go 
inside to outside. So you go in and then straight down. Or you can go outwards to inside. I like this way better because it comes on the outside of their vision and you can't see it coming as easily. So when you're doing it on the bag, obviously it's a bit hard to land on the bag, but you can do your best. We'll go outside to inside. I lift it off the rear leg and I drop it straight downwards right here in the centre. And you want to move into it as you do it. And it's a really nice kick because it's very rarely used. You don't really see a lot of axe kicks. For some reason, I don't know why. Um, but it's good if you can get the hang of it. It comes outside the eye line, drops straight down the centre. And you really want to pull your hamstring downwards to generate power. If you don't like hitting the bag, just land it straight in front. So we'll mix it up with the axe kick. center line. Keep your hands up, stretch your hamstrings if you want to be able to lift it nice and high. Your hammer fist and your back fist uh, work extremely well in MMA and they use to clear someone's guard um, if their hands are up really high. So your back fist comes off your front uh, part of your front hand so it will come this way. So this is my back fist so it comes this way and then imagine I've got a hammer in this hand my hammer comes this way and I hit with this part of my hand. So back fist this way, hammer fist this way. You can also do it on the other side. So I go back fist this way, hammer fist this way. And when you do it, you want to drop your weight down because that helps me generate more power. So I go back fist here, then I drop my hammer then I come up higher, back fist again and then drop the hammer. Now what that does is that when they're in their stance, if you land the back fist first, bang, and then the hammer, it knocks this hand out of the way, one, and then the hammer fist comes straight over afterwards. So they're used well when you link them together. So you might go back fist here, hammer fist there. Same thing on the other side. And then you speed it up. So you might miss a hook and then come back here. Or just use them individually. Start coming towards your opponent a bit like a crazy man and smashing and trying to get through their guard with your hammers. Even if you land a good clean hammer fist to someone's neck, it's a bit like a karate chop um, and you can knock them out with that power going right down here on their neck. So if you land this coming right around the side, it's really unorthodox and you, you know you don't often expect it. If I come out and I go, one, two, hammer fist, and they block this and it sneaks right around the side there, you know it's going to do some damage. So, one more time, we can do it on both sides. Back fist, hammer fist, back fist, hammer fist. Now we're going to look at the body shot from hell. This is a wicked technique, I love this one. Um, I was doing an Eric Paulson seminar down at Dave Lee's Cross Base Academy uh, a couple of months ago and Eric showed us this move and I just loved it, fell in love with it straight away and started adding it into my game. So what it is, the body shot from hell. You start here in your stance, your rear foot steps up to your front foot. As you do that, you move around the side of your opponent. So just imagine my opponent standing here like this, okay, with their hands up. What I do, I get their hands up high and then I step my back foot up to my front foot and I end up in this position. Okay, I'm ducked low, their here still blocking, facing this way, and then my right hook comes boom, straight through the middle. And then I pop straight back up to my stance afterwards. This is a beautiful technique, it works really, really well. So we're here, my opponent's facing this way with their hands up, I use quick footwork, I get down and low, and then rip through their body. 
That's why it's called the body shot from hell. So let's take a look at it on the bag. So, the bag's my opponent, as always, he's facing like this. I come here around the side, my front foot steps, and I'm facing the complete other direction. I'm shoulder to shoulder here, and I'm tucked down nice and low. Then my right hand comes round, and I go complete 180 to face this direction. And then I can square off and hit afterwards. So you're not stopping, you're not going here, and then hitting, and then stopping. You get into this position, and ripping it straight through. And if you get this to the, uh, you know, the stomach or mainly the solar plexus, you're going down, you're not breathing for a good 10 to 15 seconds. And uh, you know, that's definitely a fight finisher. So we're here. And now I come back out. Just feel the body shot. Get low, get your feet in. Get next to the bag. If you finish in front of the bag, this is the center of power. I'm never gonna hit with my opponent. So I need to get right next to it. Set it up first, get a few punches in. One more. And that's the body shot from hell. Do it one more time because I love this move. It's become my new favorite move. Jab high, cross high, get the hands up, come in low here, and rip through. One more, full speed. Back up. That's the body shot from hell. The double punch is a funky move, and you know, if you catch your opponent out with this, then you know, you're doing pretty well, it's quite flashy. Now, all you do, really simply, you jab them in the head, you cross them in the body at the same time. Okay, so, one of them's got to land. You know, if they block their head, their body's going to get hit. If they block their body, their head's going to get hit. So what you do, you lean to your right, you drive inwards, and hit. Okay, now, obviously it's a bit of fun, but you know, you can add it in when the timing's right. If they're about to wind up a big left head kick, don't go in here because you're going to get left kicked in the head. Obviously when you're sparring and you're fighting, you know when you can land certain techniques, you come in and then you can hit the double punch. It's a bit of fun, it works nicely. One of them's got to land, okay? Um, and then you can kind of apply the principle to other things. So you might throw a right hook and a right kick at the same time. So they block one and then the other one gets hit. Or maybe a right cross and a right kick. So there's double hits that you can uh, learn, which allows you to throw two moves at the same time. It's work, it works well. So we're here, you're striking. Come back out, hit double. Okay, now I wouldn't obviously suggest going around and double punching someone all day long. Add it in, change the timing up, throw it in whenever you like, have a little play with it. Double punch, keep your chin tucked. Do not do it if they've got good left kicks and they're winding one up, for obvious reasons. Play about with it, lean in, and double punch them. Now let's take a look at your round ass kick from the floor. Hmm? Weird, eh? Um, when you get knocked down in MMA, you do not want to come up and come up like this and stand in front of your opponent because you're going to get kneed in the face, kicked in the head, punched in the body, anywhere. It's the worst way to get up in the world. So, you do something called a technical get up. Now what this is, I get knocked down on the floor, my left hand comes up on my head. That protects it and against any strikes that are coming. My right hand comes on the floor and I come into my right hip. So now I'm in a good position here. I'm blocking, I can rock back a bit if I need to, but ideally I'm getting straight back up to my feet. My right hand goes here, I support my weight with my left foot. My right leg comes through the middle and then I pop back up to my stance. That's called a technical get up. One more time, let's look at it from an angle. I get hit, I'm on the floor. I go here, here, and then I make space between me and my opponent. Do not simply stand straight up because you have no guard and you'll end up back in front of them. Now, when you get hit with that technique, oh, I'm on the floor, okay? I get straight into this position. 
Now as I go to stand up, what I do, and I've caught people out with this before quite a few times, I rock over onto my left side as my right hand comes up and then I kick him in the head and I go straight back up to my feet. If you've never seen it before, it does work. I, I promise you, I've done it before. So here I've been knocked down. If I just want to do a technical get up, I get up straight away. Or if I'm down here, my opponent might be leaning into me a little bit. And they're here trying to kick my legs. I rock over, kick him in the head, and keep circling right up to my feet. So, visualize. Do it well. Obviously, that's more MMA based. You wouldn't really do that in boxing or kickboxing. So, we're here, we're doing MMA. I get knocked down. I come straight up to this position. Kick him in the head, get straight back up to my feet. You get knocked down on the street, still a good way to get up. But that's more of that another time. So let's take a look one more time. Get knocked down. I'm on my back. I come here, I turn. Kick. And get straight back up. On your back. One hand protects your head. One hand goes onto the floor. Go on that same butt cheek. Left foot comes uh, here. If I want to get back up to my feet. Or if I want to kick them, I rock around. Come up, kick, and then get straight back up to my stance. That's the roundhouse kick from the floor. There's other kicks from the floor, which we'll do another time. Now let's take a look at your double leg. Even though you might not have uh, a standing bag to do a double leg on, you can still simulate it during your rounds. Now, when you do a double leg, what you want to do, have your hips slightly lower than usual. You want to test the distance with your jab, they just need to be on the end of your jab when you throw it. Then I'm going to lower my level like I'm tying my shoelace. My front leg steps in, that's my penetration step. I drop down onto my knee as I grab around both legs. And then I step up my rear leg, turn the corner and drive them over after. So that's how you do a double leg. Test the distance, lower your level and shoot in underneath them. Okay, and when you're doing it as an MMA round, you need to add them in. Okay, you can't just spend all day long striking and then jumping straight to the ground bag. You need to visualize the transition during your punch bag training. So we're here, I'm striking. I go for my shot. Double on the floor. And then I'm straight down. Working the ground bag. I might get back up, or they escape. So we're back here, we're standing. Go for the shot. The Mele de Compasso is from Capoeira, and it's a spinning heel kick where you put your hand on the floor first. Now, a normal spin heel kick, I'm here, I spin, I hit with my heel and I go back to stance. With the Mele de Compasso, as I spin, my left hand touches the floor. And then I come back to stance, okay? What that does is let my leg come up a little bit higher because my body's at more of an angle. So one more time, I'm here, I come down, and then I spin heel kick. Um, Conor McGregor uses this uh, in his earliest UFC fights quite a bit. Um, looks pretty cool, it's quite funky, and uh, it lets your body extend your leg out a little bit higher as well. When you're doing it, you can hit the bag, or you can spin all the way through. And you get a hell of a lot of power in it as well. We're here, I'm out. Here, come back. If you like your spinning techniques, fake one way. Hit, and then come back here again afterwards. Slash and made it a compasso, a spinning heel kick where your hand goes flat on the floor first. The GSP jab was made famous by George St. Pierre, UFC fighter and legend. And what you're gonna do when you're in your start, you lift up your front leg, as your front leg comes up, you jab off that hand. Now what it does is let me cover quite a bit of distance. So we're here, and then I'm in, okay? Quite a nice combo to throw when your opponent moves backwards is the GSP jab 
an overhand, and then a left kick afterwards. That's a really nice combo. So you go here, just because it flows nicely. But you can add in the GSP jab whenever you fancy. So you've got your jump cross where your right knee comes up and you punch, or you've got your GSP jab where your front knee comes up and you punch. And you see how you close the distance straight away. And then you can just add it in to whatever you like. Might jump cross. I might fake the knee and then knee. Or I might fake the knee and then jab him in the face. So if they're reacting a lot to this knee, lift the knee, jab them and land back in your stance. One more time, slow. My front knee comes up, I kick it back. As my rear leg travels forwards, and I land back here. One more fast one. GSP jab. George said, yeah. Check them out. When you're fighting in the cage, you can actually use the cage to jump off uh, and pull off some cool techniques. Uh, if you saw Anthony Pettis, he pulled off what's now known as the Showtime Kick, where he jumped off the wall and then kicked straight off that, straight into his opponent's chin, sending him straight down to the floor. But you've got to be at the right distance. As you can see, quite a big gap here. Now, I wouldn't usually jump off the cage at this sort of distance. Uh, and throw a kick, but you can get the idea if my opponent's there and I might be circling around this edge of the cage, I might jump here and then come shot with it. Very unorthodox, you know, if my opponent's there and he sees me running up this way, he doesn't know what's coming. And you can throw loads of different techniques. So um, if I just do it in the air, you might throw punches, you might throw elbows, you might throw knees or you might throw kicks so you come here and you can kick them straight off that as well but as there's quite a lot of distance here it's going to be quite lively to get my leg all the way up over there so you know punches are good because you haven't got to use your legs you can land nicely after so use the wall won't work sorry use the cage won't work in a ring obviously unless you're really good at wrestling and bouncing off the ropes, but more than likely, if you're cage fighting and you pulled off quite a few funky moves, you know, when you train this move over and over again, pick one that you like, it might be the Showtime Kick, or it might be the Punch Bag Pro Punch off the wall or the cage, we'll check that out. There you go, I've just named it, named and claimed, Punch Bag Pro Punch. If you see someone flying off the cage or wall in their gym doing this, you'll go, hey dude, that's the punch bag pro punch. I like it. So use your surroundings. Two of my favourite Thai fighters are Pakao and Sanchai. Now if you watch a lot of Sanchai, you'll see that he pulls off the handstand to head kick. Now I call this one the Sanchai kick. And what you want to do, as your hand goes down to the floor, you're going to lift your right leg up, kick, and then go straight back to your stance. It's pretty damn cool, right? So practice this one. Your left hand goes down, your right leg comes up, you kick them square in the head. And land straight back in your stance afterwards. So that's called the Sentry Head Kick. Obviously it takes a lot of practice, support your weight, get your leg up, balance, back to stance afterwards. And then you can just add it in whenever you fancy. Bit of boxing. Add in the sunshine. Straight back after. Head kick, handstand down on one hand, leg comes up, kick, 
straight back to Sark's afterwards. You can do it on patches and other stuff, but we'll explore that another time.